thanks for joining us once again. So yeah, we have another miracle lineup today. And uh, we are going to start with, uh, with Andy's show, Andy and Nicholas's show, but maybe you can mention the lineup we have today. Yeah, absolutely. So this morning, as Peter mentioned, we've got Modern Mystics with Andy and Nicholas. And following on the heels of that with our 15-minute break is uh, Divine Intervention with Ken and Anna. And then following that will be Free Your Mind with Laverne. She'll be taking us through a spiri today, which is, promises to be really beautiful. And uh, following that is Leap with Susan and special guest Jason Warwick. And finally, to round out our lineup for tonight, or for today, we've got The Last Step with Jeffrey and special guest Frank. Yeah, man, I'll just read a little blurb for Andy's show here. So, <clears throat> from high school friends to modern mystics, join Nicholas Texier and Andy Pege as they let go of the past and enter the vast. So, <laughs> let's cross over to Andy's show now. <laughs> vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. You're not your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper. to realize that you literally are your brother. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Modern Mystics with me and my brother Nicholas. And um, this week we put a little poll out on Facebook and we just asked, we put several suggestions and asking for any input on maybe some topics that you wanted to hear. And it seemed like the number one topic was guidance. So I think we're going to start off talking about guidance and then see where we go from there. But I just wanted you to say hi to Nicholas here. Before we get hey, started. everyone. <laughs> hi, guys. It's great to be here with you all. I'm just excited to be here with Andy. It's, it's always a joy to just share this space with my, with my dear brother. And, and actually, I felt um, I really like the topic of guidance because as someone actually shared who's here for a devotional stay, this guidance was like this thing. Like I was like, what is this? And I, and I wanted to experience it so badly. And, and when I somehow, and I think I was guided before, I, you know, it's like we've been guided the whole time. We just haven't known it really. But I, I found uh, one of the websites from Living Miracles at some point, which uh, just the way it was saying on there, I just could see like, wow, they're, they're living this. And that's, that's what I want. I want to live guidance. Like, but what is this? You know, I want to experience this. And so actually, as I could, as I've just been seeing <laughs> what guidance is, I've been being shown the whole time. But uh, yeah, I was actually guided then to come to this community, which I thought originally would only be for about three weeks and well <laughs> then it turned into four and a half months and then pretty much three years <laughs> so it's been this it's been this great thing but actually me and andy and everyone from this community and, and others really it's like every day is is living the guidance but but it's not been what i thought it was going to be you know there was this thought of guidance was this thing that i could just kind of activate when I wanted to and kind of use it in whatever situation I wanted to like okay spirit I'm gonna to go to this date and I'm gonna to go to this date with this person so I'm gonna choose basically all the specifics and then I want you to guide me after that <laughs> and no actually guidance is and uh, we'll have more parables of these but guidance is my experience at least that's all I can really share is it's a surrendering it's really this letting go of what I thought my life would look like in every moment of what I thought this day would look like, this show would look like, <laughs> all of it. It's like, I will step back and let him lead the way. And I actually just, I pulled up just before, because I like doing this, like, what would you have me read even? 
And there was just this one paragraph because I kept, I kept seeing the page numbers 238 in my mind. I was like, hmm, I have no idea what's on page 238. And at the very top, it said, the Holy Spirit stands at the end of time. This is in A Course in Miracles. Chap yeah, chapter 13, The Guiltless World and Guiltlessness and Invulnerability. The Holy Spirit stands at the end of time where you must be because he is with you. He has already undone everything unworthy of the Son of God, for such was his mission given him by God, and what God gives has already been. But to me, what that means is, yeah, it's like the script is written, guidance is already there, but we just have to be willing to allow ourselves to, you know, to follow that flow, that flow of the guidance, to find, you know, that experience of like, okay, yeah, I'm actually... I mean, source, and it's, it's this development of trust. And I know Andy actually has this parable he was, uh, that he has in mind that was on his heart. That he, was, he didn't want to share too much with me because he wanted to keep it fresh. <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah. You want to go ahead, actually? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to talk about how, you know, it's like the human condition is every day we're trying to survive and you're trying to figure out what to do next. And it's so stressful. Like being a human is so stressful because you're, you constantly seem to have to make decisions. And there seems to be so many hypothetical situations. It's like, I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. And it's so stressful. It's like, it's just a constant um, feeling of stress and a constant feeling of, I have to do things and make decisions because there's a future that's not going to happen unless I make those decisions. And I feel like that's why guidance is so important because guidance, it's to me, it's really listening to another voice than the egos. And, you know, it's like the human condition. It's like listening to this voice that's so loud in your mind where, the, you know, it could be several voices and they're all chaotic thoughts and none of those thoughts really make you happy. And so basically Course in Miracles is helping you get in touch with a different voice in your mind a voice that it calls the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will guide you through time and space to lead you to uh, experiences and situations and places that are most conducive to healing your mind, which makes you happy. And so when you follow the Holy Spirit's guidance and another word for the Holy Spirit's guidance is intuition. So when you start following that, then life becomes kind of like this beautiful stream like it's like you're laying in a river on your back and you're just being carried it's like you don't have to constantly try to think about the decisions you're going to make or feel the stress of all the hypotheticals like this could happen this could happen this could happen it's like you're just following your intuition and that's taking you exactly where you need to go and you feel so happy and you feel so relaxed because you're not really doing anything you're just allowing yourself to be carried through through life and it's just so beautiful. And I feel like a big question is, um, how, can I, how can I hear the Holy Spirit, you know? Or how can I hear the Holy Spirit's voice stronger in my mind? And in my experience, it's like the stronger my desire is to hear the Holy Spirit, um, the louder the Holy Spirit will be in my mind. And it's not always seemingly a voice. It could be signs and symbols in the world as well but i remember this one experience where i was going to the gym a lot and um it was clearly guided for me to stop going to the gym at some point because it was a conflict of interest you know because i was reading the course in miracles it's like i'm not a body and i'm having all these experiences and then i'm going to the gym and i'm looking at my muscles and i'm like you know bro bro and yeah just focusing a lot on the body and it made no sense it's like the split was unbearable at, at a certain point but it was it, it seemed to be like my decision how long do i want to go with this split in my mind and the longer i went the more painful it was um so i think at some point i was at the gym and i just felt I felt this prompt and prompt is like, it's, it's basically the Holy Spirit's trying to tell you what the next step for your guidance is. If you want to listen. And I felt like this prompt in my heart about just go for a walk, like leave the middle of your workout and go for a walk. And for me, that was so strange because I had this like structured workout. It's like, do this, this, do this. And for me to leave in the middle of it was like, ah, you know, it was like that was to me to do that. But I, 
I felt the pain of not listening to the guidance. So I was willing to actually follow that and see what happens. So yeah. I actually follow that guidance and I walked straight out the gym in the middle of the workout. And uh, I just went for this walk, a beautiful walk. It was like everything was green, the, the trees and everything, rather than this underground gym where it's like you can't even see the sun. It's a very small <laughs> of, <laughs> of the ch choice that I was making to be there, basically. And, and uh, yeah, I was just going for this walk and I, I instantly felt so much happier and more peaceful. And if anything, that's a clear sign to me. It's like, okay, now I'm on the right track. You know, it's like, it's like these kind of experiences show us that it's like, it's worth it to keep following the Holy Spirit. And so I remember I was walking down this, um, this long sidewalk with all the trees and it was so beautiful. And then each person that I would walk by, I, I was just looking in their eyes and I would hear the Holy Spirit say, uh, see the kingdom in your brother. And then I would just feel like this beautiful experience. And I felt such a deep connection with every single person that I walked by. And then, and then I, I felt how good that felt. So I kept wanting to hear, okay, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm listening now. Like, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then, so I kept following those prompts and I would walk through different streets. And then I remember, um, I walked past this synagogue or something. And then when I walked past Holy Spirit was like, turn around and walk by it again. I was like, okay. And then, so I, I didn't know what that was about, but then I walked by it again. And then I realized I had some judgments about the synagogue and um, the Jewish people and religion in, in general. So I realized that's why I was being guided to walk by it again. So I could see those thoughts and I saw them and I was like, Oh, that's why you're guiding me here. So now I'm going to look at those thoughts. I'm going to give those thoughts and beliefs over to you. And, um, yeah, that was just one experience that I had that was just really beautiful. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Actually, you just reminded me that I had the very same sort of experience myself with working out. Because actually, I don't know if we ever talked about this at the time, but we were actually a bit competitive like with working out. Like, how much do you deadlift? And then, oh, I've got to beat them. <laughs> this, is, this is before fully immersing in the course. But we were a little bit competitive maybe like friendly competition but there's still competition and I remember I remember myself actually I think it was about six seven months into really diving into the course I was very consistent with my working out I had a I had an eating regimen I followed like I was very disciplined so I learned that from my my basketball kind of life up until that point of really being disciplined so I'd had like a year or two straight of already kind of working out and and here I was getting into the courses well like really deeply and that's when I just I was starting to have these very profound uh, experiences of like seeing more of the darkness in my mind at that time and and I remember like I just was having this little bit of this thought of like huh I don't know if this is for me anymore and, and I remember at this one workout I remember I was like half halfway through my workout and again I had the same thing as Andy like just this structured thing and, and I was in my I think third set of bench press and I was I was just lifting it up and I think I had, I was like halfway through my set and I just felt like, okay, I, I finished, you know, I put the, the bell, uh, the bar down, walked out of the gym, never went back. I just, I couldn't feel it. It was like this contrast thing of like, I'm going to throw up if I do one more like repetition of this. I, I can't do it. I just, I remember walking straight out, cleaning stuff. And then I just never ended up going back because there was this thing with the course where I was just starting to learn like freedom of the body or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have. And I was starting to see like, why am I working out? Like what is under this? Because I'm actually not really having fun. This is kind of heavy. You know, some people, they can really feel like it's a meditation for them, but I was having to look much more closely at my mind. Like what is, why am I doing this? I'm not happy. And this is really tough stuff. Like during every single day, you know, a regimen, I was just not having fun. But I was like so committed. I didn't want to like quit. You know, I hated that quitting word. <laughs> but when I really started to look at my mind, I could see, wow, I just want to work out to get love. I just want to look good to attract someone else to get what I think is love. That's the only reason I'm working out. Just to have a certain look to my body to basically manipulate another mind or try to manipulate someone else 
to be attracted. It's actually, it's, it's kind of dark when you really look at it. But, <laughs> but it was, it was good. Like I was happy because it was just like, you know, I was starting to really see a lot of these underpinnings in my mind. And I was starting to see, wow, I can't just have the course as this hobby. Not that I even really thought of it that way, but I started to see, well, if I really want the experience of what A Course in Miracles is pointing to, and this was really before even knowing so much about this community and everything. This was maybe six or seven months before arriving at Living Miracles, but I was starting to see, wow, I have to actually devote my life to this. You know, when I hear people, or I've heard that question, like, how do I hear the Holy Spirit? Like, how do I know if it's the ego or Holy Spirit? My honest answer is, in my experience, it's not like, like, oh, just do this. For me, it's been, it's been this process. It's required devotion. I've had to devote my life to this. I've had to let go of everything else. I've had to really step in and let go of my previous desires. Like, and just, but it's been this process of clearing out. Like, I've had to allow all these deep, raw emotions up. My first month here, because I felt the safety for it, I was at the monastery. I arrived in the middle of nowhere in Utah, the canyon, but it was gorgeous, you know, I felt this attraction towards it, you know, like, I like, I feel like I'm supposed to go, there was like this tickle in my heart, really, and my first month, like, really, or first three weeks, like, not kidding, I was breaking down, like, having a huge breakdown at least, at least once a day, every day, like, just totally falling apart, and just having my brothers hold me, like, through it, just so I could cry and I would have this experience where it'd be so intense, like my hands and face would start to like crumple up, but it was this real, like I felt the safety, like all my brothers here are devoted to this and I'm safe and I can allow myself to fall apart. That's been the gift of the monastery for me. And yeah, it's been this real experience of like, I need to step back. I need to like give my full life to this in order to experience. And I even had my friend, um, he, was, he used to be my basketball coach. His name is David West. And he, he sent me a, a book before. And he's like this devoted Christian friend of mine. And, and he sent me this he, every day, actually, for a while. I think maybe for two years now. Like, I've just seen his devotion where he prays for me every single day. He told me that at one point, And he sends me like this inspiring Christian image or uh, video or something every single day. Like, I wake up for him. It's right there waiting for me. And one of them he sent me, it was a few days ago, it was like, uh, I don't know if I'll remember exact word, but it was basically like, why do you want like full blessings from God as a partial Christian? Like you need to be a full Christian to get the full blessings from God. And I was like, yeah, like, you got to go for it fully. You know, you can't just, well, I was about to use another word, but you can't half, half do it. <laughs> And, and that's actually, it's been my experience where like, yeah, I, I remember just recently, like I was here in this devoted way with this community for about three years. And it was uh, this past October where I really was, you know, it's like I could feel in my mind, like something wasn't feeling right. Like, I, th I think I have like some other thing I need to do or like another step I need to take. And yet, personally that's the only way i can describe it personally i want to stay and live in this community like i want to be at the center be around everyone i just like i love it like i don't get it but something wasn't feeling right like i felt like i had another step to take not that anything's gone wrong and that's been this real experience where these prompts like especially when it's something that goes against what we seem to personally want that's where you can start to see the split in the mind. Like there's this thing that's pulling you and yet personally there's either fear or there's a seeming separate desire. And what I had to eventually like, you know, really join with my brothers here. And that's been the real gift of this community for me where it's, if I'm unsure, it's like, that's why our brothers are here to join with us because really there's only one Holy spirit. There's only one guidance. And if I'm really open to hearing the guidance, then I can join with a, with a trusted mighty companion or you know brother or someone on my path um, that's also really devoted to this purpose purpose and we will hear the same thing we will both feel it and that's what happened with me where i felt like i got this and then i remember joining i think it was with jason and he was hearing kind of the same thing for me and so actually you know it was really this thing of i gotta surrender because what i personally want is to stay but i have this thing pulling me and it ended up being 
just this real deepening for me because it was actually an answer to this prayer in my heart where I wanted to feel even more deeply like this trust. It all comes down to trust. And I really wanted to feel like, okay, it's really you that have been guiding me. You're, you know, you spare you. Jesus is what has, what has brought me to this community, brought me to the course. And I was seemingly pulling me out for whatever this next step is. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I was like, I just, I feel like I have to do a thing. And the only specific I was really getting was potentially something why, but also I had a, this bank issue that kept reoccurring with my bank that was in Maryland. And I was all the way to Mexico. And I had to, I had to go. I had to t- take care of this because it kept causing me issues. So that is what initially pulled me out. The next thing I know, it brings me to seeing uh, Andy's parents, you know, joining with them this very deep way about his life and like, yeah, we're to be in here in full support of Andy and his path and just, and uh, then it brought me to a high school, five-year high school reunion, which was like this huge miraculous event that I wasn't sure if I'd go. I I remember feeling like, oh, I think I want this, like to go to this, but you're going to have to give it to me because if it's just me going by myself, it's not going to be fun you know, unless it's actually given and guided, it flows in easily. And, and that's what happened. And then this whole thing with Europe, which I may go into, but I just, <laughs> yeah, I have Andy on my mind right now. And I feel like, yes, Aaron, <laughs> I, I don't want to like take up the rest of this. <laughs> so it's okay. I just, I think I just wanted to say that the the Holy Spirit was really gentle, you know, and the Holy Spirit is gentle with everyone. So it's not like, if you find yourself in a position where it feels like you're split, like I know when I was, when I seemed to be very split in what I wanted, um, I know it felt really good for me to at least like really play out all the things that I really thought that I wanted before I really gave my hundred percent to Holy Spirit because you know, it feels like I came to this world for a reason, seemingly. And it's like something here might have attracted me. So let me see if anything that I like is actually going to satisfy me. So I feel like I went through like a few years of trying to do that where it was with the business, real estate, you know, um, dating and girls and sex. And I basically tried everything that I thought I wanted um, because I wanted to see like, is this it? And I feel like at some point I burned out or it felt so painful where I was like, okay, it's obvious what I want now. And that was kind of like, like with the gym, that was the point where it was so painful that I just couldn't, I went for that walk and I had that experience. And then um, that really confirmed to me like which direction I should go. And um, yeah, just, I wanted to share another experience of guidance that felt really inspiring. I, like I said before, depending on your desire to hear the Holy Spirit, that's how strong you'll hear it. And so I remember I went with a friend once in the park and he had this call for love and we were joining because he just went through a breakup and um, I was basically going to just just extend with him. And we went to this park and I had never gone there before, but we were just walking through and I was just sharing everything that I had learned on, on the past so far. And he was a Course in Miracles student as well. And And then on the way back, we kind of got lost where it was a park I had never been to and he had never been through that way at home. And we went through a few crossroads and I remember we went to, it was like a fork in the road and neither of us knew which direction to go. And I was just like left and, and then we went left and then we went through another fork in the road and I was like, yeah, it's right. And then we went right. And then another one. And I was like, right. And then, and then I realized like neither of us had any idea where we were, but I just felt that like intuitively that's where the Holy Spirit was telling me, me to go. And I think it felt so clear in my mind when I heard the left and right is because I had no, I had no agenda or no desire against the Holy Spirit because I was really there just to join with my brother. And, and so I could really hear if it was a left or right, or I was really tuned into the Holy Spirit because I really didn't know anything. So I think that situation was one of those where it's like, it's really helpful to know that I don't know anything. So I will follow you now. 
And I feel like being in that I don't know mind really helps to hear the Holy Spirit as well. Oh, it's perfect, Andy. It's perfect. I love the context you just gave. Because, yeah, it's really a lot of this is letting go. And this, it requires that I don't know. I think we were talking about that. And, and I just even had the thought that, yeah, actually, I had as well a similar experience uh, when I was in Europe. Because, first of all, I was deadly afraid of traveling. <laughs> or maybe before, okay, it's, it washed a bit as the years went on, but I was, I had this fear of traveling, so that was part of this deepening of trust with the Spirit, because I was like, okay, if you guide this, I'm, I'm willing to try this, but, like, you've got to show me the way, because, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing, I've rarely traveled on my own, or in general, like, my life, just, uh, you know, usually parents are buying me tickets, and, you know, arranging everything for me, and so then I had this experience of where now it seemed to be me having to arrange everything, and, I remember, you know, just the whole Europe thing, like not knowing the language and uh, the money and everything. It was just this big, like, okay, Spirit, you got to show me because I don't know what I'm doing here. And um, I remember the specific day when I was being hosted by one of my friends in in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, it was back in in December, and they were. It was it was a day after Christmas, and they were going to go meet some family friends. And so I was like, hmm, well, let's see what. I, so for me, and I started to hear, I think I was supposed to go to Amsterdam because I'd never been. And I was just like, there's something about Amsterdam where I felt like I wanted to check it out. So I ended up taking this train ride all the way to Amsterdam. And when I got there, I there was this place called the Trust Cafe. And I, I wanted to go meet the people there because I'd heard about them. And, and so I had this wonderful, just joining with them, sharing about my life experience with David. And because David had gone there with some of the elders of this community at some point. And then I remember I was like, well, I still have some, a couple hours before I should, I feel to head back. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I just remember being like, okay, well, I feel to walk to this park and someone had told me about it. And I knew it was starting to get kind of dark and um, lighting wise. And I just I had this prompt of like, well, I feel like I want to go back, but I don't want to take a bus ride. That just feels kind of boring. <laughs> you know, that doesn't feel inspiring. And I heard, follow the light your way all the way back to the central station. I was like, huh, that feels fun. So I started walking the streets and I would walk only on the streets that had these big Christmas lights all the way along. And so I'd be following it and then there'd be, you know, I'd be, oh, now it's right and then left and right. And then I know some streets would have these different lights and I'd follow the, I felt to like follow the brightest ones and I followed it. And I was amazed that by the end of it, I found myself right at central station just by following the light, which felt very symbolic for me. It's just like, I don't know where I'm going, but the light is leading the way. <laughs> so I just, I remember th that having like this powerful experience on me of just like, I can keep trusting that. And I had many of these miracles of just like it becoming very obvious. Like that's been, I'd say that's maybe the most helpful thing I could share about my experience with guidance, which I've heard David and many of the people in this community talk about, where it's really this prayer of make it obvious. Because in that, there's an admission that I don't know, and I'm willing to follow. And I, I'm really willing to follow because it needs to be obvious. I need it to be absolutely obvious in a way that I can recognize. So I've, I've said that. And even every day now, or almost every day now, I still pray, like, make it obvious I'm supposed to be here right now. You know, I want to have the experience that I am where I need to be right now. I want to have the miracles. I need you to show me. I need every day to be convinced. It's not, it's not good enough to have an idea of like, oh, this is good. Like, I want every day to be washed in miracles. Like, that's my prayer. Like, show me. Guide me through it all. And really, there is something I posted on Facebook, which is, what is guided is provided. I, I heard Kirsten say that. I don't know if she was the first, but <laughs> I quoted her. What is guided is provided. And that's divine providence. And actually, this next month's online retreat is on divine providence. And that's been really the experience that really becomes very simple. Like whatever you feel is easily coming into your life or into your mind at the moment, that's, you know, whatever's being provided easily in the moment, that's what's guided, you know? And, and then if you're unsure, then that's where you kind of connect to my companions, but it's, it actually does become kind of easier and easier. It's like a muscle you strengthen, you know, that's been my experience of guidance. Like the more you experiment, the more you're willing to fail, so to speak, but really try to follow what you're feeling with this honest prayer of I'm here only to be truly helpful or I'm willing to follow, you'll hear guidance. Thank you, Nicholas.
<laughs> so I think we're just about finished here. I think we have like 30 seconds left, but thank <laughs> you all for joining us. And our next show is in two weeks, I believe. And yep. yeah, the 29th, I think. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Now we're going to pass it on to Kristen and Peter now. Thank you. Love you, brother. Love you, Nicholas. <laughs> Okay, thanks so much, Nicholas, and thanks, Andy. <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your parables, and I just, it's so beautiful that you said I will step back and lead, let him lead the way, because I actually had that in my mind this morning, and even just these ideas of stepping back and stepping forward, or stepping in, I think you said, and I was just sitting here praying about that, and it's almost like they're the same thing. Like, you can't actually step in and give, and like really have the experience of being guided and divine providence and this deep deep feeling of connectedness until you can actually step back and let him lead the way because that's i mean it's just the demonstration that you're able to trust mm. yeah i mean i just had the movie um the matrix coming to mind during when these guys were talking and you know that there's that point where neo gets the, the knock on the door the knock knock neo and he has to take that step of like uh you know, follow the white rabbit, you know, are you willing to follow the white rabbit and uh, go down the rabbit hole, see where it leads. But yeah, just, just, you know, just that call that he had to wake up was really what was behind all the guidance he was receiving, like through the movie and behind his whole willingness to follow. And, you know, it was, it was leading him right out of the world, but that was, it was the call that was behind everything. It wasn't uh, just about specifics about, you know, where do I get the best coffee? It was really like, you know, he really, felt that deep calling that's what was leading all of the guidance yeah and just that little crack of opening in the heart with that call you know firmly planted like that's at the forefront of my mind that's what lives alive on my heart then it's it, it just becomes very easy to see follow the white rabbit okay that's it that's all i need to do just follow the next prompt yeah and just like you know andy was saying like which seemingly led him uh, to community in his case or, or nicholas was saying that too and and then there was like, I just had that scene like in the Matrix when he does pop through and he's picked up by the giant robot claw and put onto the ship and they all hold him. And he's like, he can barely see. He's like, oh my gosh, he's, he's a new. And then, <laughs> you know, there's seemingly a period of like throwing up <laughs> when he finds out like when he really, his eyes are opening and he's just like seeing everything in you, but everyone's there to support him while he throws up. <laughs> yeah, why, why do my eyes hurt? Because you've never, never used, used them, them before. before. <laughs> so yeah, it's this beautiful transformation and like a, a rebirth feels like. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, stay tuned in, uh, in just a few minutes, like right around 10 minutes, we'll have uh, another show coming in, Divine Providence with Ken and Anna. Okay. Strawberry Fields Forever Festival is just this welcome of those that have been called to this deep path to come together. And I always like it. We just seem to come in touch with people in such given ways and then invite them and yeah, it's such a joy to meet them in the field. You know, that's part of the fun of why we put this on take the time to put it on because, you know, there's a welcoming. Like, ah, oh, welcome. And, you know, sometimes we hear their music or we have interaction like with Maddie Z or, you know, you and uh, Ricky had a beautiful encounter with him. And yeah, it just warms the heart to think of some of the ones that are going to be coming and joining us there. Neda, Boa, and then these different ones that have been called and from our community. This is just such an opportunity to extend the gift that they have received and uh, bless everyone and be blessed themselves. So, yeah, it's really precious. It is. It is. It's like each of those 
musicians that you mentioned, they're all like deeply devoted to the course as their path as well. And just that, I mean, the devotion to the course, it's such a deep path of undoing the self-concept and being willing to let go of everything to serve like to serve Christ and serve the Spirit and so that's part of what I feel um, so honored to invite them and have them come and share their gifts because I know what they've gone through <laughs> mm -hmm. even to be able yes. to receive the music yeah. they've gone through a lot of letting go and clearing their mind and devotion to the mind training and and so to have them come and share their experiences and you know for most of them their songs have come as a as an effect of the miracle mm -hmm. or as a desire for the miracle like it's part of a prayer like I need to feel your love or help me release this help me change my mind guide me show me or then the effect of going into a mystical experience and so the songs we're going to be blessed with at the whole festival are, are that they're purely experiential Mm -hmm. all about the awakening from the awakening for the awakening yeah. <laughs> and an invitation to be in it together yeah and it's not a performance like yeah. you said it's like none of us are going there to perform for an external audience it's it's the intention is to be in the presence and allow that to to bless us and everyone at mm -hmm. the same time and mm -hmm. and i feel that's what in some ways is probably different about this to most even concerts where there's a real focus on the perfection of the form and of course we're going to have incredibly high quality because that mm -hmm. supports you know, yeah. the, the music and we already have a team of um, volunteers friends who are very specialized at working with sound and so all of that's going to be there too but at the end of the day you know if the sound if the electricity went out you know we would all have the exact same experience yeah. with or without the form yeah. of it yeah. you know it's it's all about the presence and the fact that the spirit wants it to happen and mm. and it's the spirit doing it all and so nothing can actually stop that experience or interfere yeah. with it in any way yeah nothing can go wrong right. really. coming to you from my cabin here at the Living Miracles Monastery and I have this deep like heartfelt yearning for myself since I was very small that 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 I just wanted to know what the truth was what the truth of everything was and I really found when I came here that I was available to be shown what the truth was I became aware that what I'd been doing was distracting myself and so there was no chance of me discovering what the truth was because of my fear of being alone or being quiet or being still. And here, because the container is so pure, it was possible to drop in deep. It was possible to have this experience of discovering how loved I was. You know, there's, there's a healthness in the mind. There's, there's a container of the canyon. There's the beautiful nature outside and you can hear the wind and the birds and the bunnies and all of the little things around here. It's like a St. Francis dream out in this canyon. And I really, for myself, I just wanted my heart to be able to open up and feel safe and contained and unafraid. Because I think there's such a deep belief that there's deep, deep darkness there that's going to come up every time you're silent. And coming for a personal stay or even a silent week-long retreat, there's so much support for the mind. And that's wonderful. So this, this space and this place is just devoted to saying, take courage, come, sink in, discover your loved, discover the beloved inside, discover all the inspiration that's going to support you for when you seem to step out of here and, and there are other calls upon your time. Nurture and renew. This is the water of life and it's for everybody. Because no matter what tradition you come from, it's all about know thyself.
you know, you already are what you're looking for, what you're searching for, and you don't have to fix yourself, which is pretty much the mentality of the world. When you see yourself as weary, come be and be undone. So this book is really, if you give yourself over to it, that's really what the book is about. It's about coming back to a remembering of who you are. None of us were really told how to go inside. A lot of us read that in different spiritual traditions that uh, you're supposed to search within for the answers. And so I think this book, in one sense, gives you the how. As you begin to open up your mind and open up your heart, then you do get in touch with some pretty intense emotions. And this book is, in that sense, a gentle guide as well to take you down deeper and deeper and deeper. It's been a culmination of about close to 20 years of collaborations that have gone into this book. And some of you who have seen the book know that it's actually three books in one. It's kind of like a trilogy in one. The book really helps with the mind training of starting to realize that everything is, a, is an idea and that ideas leave not their source. And just like Christ could never leave the mind of God, the ideas and everything we perceive in this world as much as it may seem to be out there, isn't really out there. That the, the way the healing occurs is this integration of seeing that every, anything that you're bothered by, anything that you're disturbed by, frustrated by, it's because you're still trying to see it outside of your mind. And the Spirit is gently using this book, and as far as the unwinding, to bring it back to see that you have empowerment, you Actually, your mind contains all the thoughts. Welcome to the unknown, above the battleground where all is released and realized. This is the state for the living not the dead. When all is forgiven, we transcend into the divine abyss of creation. Freedom and joy await our return. Deep within the mind, there is a place where the Kingdom of Heaven is known. Very still and quiet am I, watching, observing the never-changing reality of who I am. Welcome to the Tabula Rossa Mystery School, where you will awaken to what has never not been.
we're back once again. And uh, we've got a Ken and Anna show coming up, Divine Providence. Not Divine, oh yeah, not Divine Providence. No, it's not divine, divine Providence. We keep saying that. It's just we have this. <laughs> divine Providence on the mind. <laughs> it's just this beautiful retreat we've got coming up next month. Um, with a focus on divine intervention and if you've been a part of these retreats divine providence actually <laughs> oh i said it again they're just fantastic <laughs> so do check out our event page today is the last day of the early bird and um yeah get on that if you want to be a part of it so without further ado we'll take you over to divine intervention, intervention. <laughs> with ken and Anna. take it away <laughs> Hi, good morning. Buenos dias. Yeah, welcome everyone. Bienvenidos. So I'm with Anna. Estoy aquí con Anna. Y yo estoy aquí con Ken. I'm here with Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just as I was sat here, I just felt so honored um, to be sharing. Mientras estaba aquí sentado, me sentí muy honrado de estar aquí compartiendo. What Jesus has given us. Lo que Jesús nos ha dado. Yeah, it's so wonderful that everything is being offered us. Es tan maravilloso que todo se nos está siendo ofrecido. And I feel so grateful for that. Y me siento tan agradecido por esto. But there truly is a way out of all this mess. Que realmente hay una manera de salir de todo este desastre. And so today, the themes that really came up for us. Así que los temas que realmente vinieron a nosotros esta semana. Were trust. Fueron confianza, prayer, oración, and faith. y fe. And I was just thinking, it's, it's taken a lot of trust for me even to sit in this chair, <laughs> to be honest. Y puedo darme cuenta que también tomo un montón de confianza solo sentarme en esta silla. That this wouldn't be something that I would like to do. Que eso no sería algo que me gustaría hacer. It's not my personal choice. No es mi opción, algo que escogería personalmente. However, Jesus says we have to hand everything over to him, everything. Sin embargo, Jesús dice que tenemos que entregar absolutamente todo a él. Without exception. Sin excepción. And so that's what we want to do today. Así que eso es lo que queremos hacer el día de hoy. We want to have the real experience. Queremos tener la verdadera experiencia. And so that's what we're inviting everybody into today, into the miracle. Y eso es lo que queremos invitar a todos al milagro. So if you would like to take the invitation, si te gustaría tomar la invitación, is that we want to look at where you're not trusting God. Es que queremos ver esas áreas donde no estás confiando en Dios. What are you holding back? ¿En qué te estás quedando atrás? What's stopping you from handing everything over? ¿Qué te está deteniendo para entregar todo? So the invitation is just for us all to close our eyes right now. Así que la invitación es para que todos cerremos nuestros ojos ahora. And it could be something really small. Y podría ser algo muy pequeño. It could be the biggest thing in your mind. Podría ser la cosa más grande en tu mente. Or there may not be anything there. O puede que no haya time. nada ahorita. And everything is good. Y todo okay. está bien. So just really getting in contact. What is it? Solo that's realmente ponerte en contacto con esto. With God. ¿Qué me está deteniendo para estar con Dios? And if nothing comes, don't worry. Si nada viene, no te preocupes. We're going to be talking. Vamos a estar hablando. And I'm sure something will arise. Y estoy seguro que algo va a venir. So when you feel comfortable, you can come back and open your eyes again. Así que cuando te sientas cómodo, puedes volver a abrir tus ojos. Just hold in your mind the intention of being shown what it is being revealed to you, what's blocking you. Solo mantén en tu mente esa intención de ver qué es lo que te está bloqueando. And so we'd like to begin by talking about prayer. Así que nos gustaría empezar hablando acerca de la oración. And when Anna and I had that conversation about prayer. Y cuando Ana y yo tuvimos esa conversación acerca de la oración. We were like, what does that mean to pray? Y que estábamos preguntando qué significa orar. 
So I, I just shared with Anna. <clears throat> ¿Y qué compartí con Anna? It's like if it's something really, really big. Es como que si es algo realmente grande. Like I am giving absolutely everything to this prayer. Que estoy dando absolutamente todo en yeah. esta oración. There's no doubt in my mind. No hay ninguna duda en mi mente. I'm on my knees. Estoy en mi, de rodillas. And I am praying, Lord, you have to help me in this moment. Y estoy orando, Señor, tienes que ayudarme en este momento. And that's why he's really saying to us is that we have to pray like that over everything. Y eso es lo que realmente nos está diciendo. Tenemos que orar de esta manera acerca de todo. So that's my prayer right now is to consistently pray. Así que esa es mi oración ahorita. Estar orando constantemente. That there's nothing small going on here at all. Que no hay nada pequeño que está sucediendo ahorita. Everything is so important. Todo es tan importante. Yeah. Did you want to yeah. share a bit more about prayer for you? ¿Quieres compartir algo más de la oración? Yes, I would like to share too that I really, really like this prayer that Rumi has. Me mm gustaría -hmm. compartir esta bella oración que ha hecho Rumi acerca de esto. Maybe you can read the English. And... Yeah. So this seems like a good way to pray. Gamble everything for love. Half-heartedness does not reach into majesty. Apuesta todo por el amor. La tibieza no llega a la majestad. And it's really this, like, just giving everything, like with all your heart, to the, every prayer that you make. Realmente dar todo, todo, todo lo que está en tu corazón en esta oración. And I feel like Prayer is the medium for miracles, as it says in the Course. Through prayers, we are open to something bigger. Y siento que la oración es el vehículo de los milagros, y a través de la oración nos estamos abriendo algo muchísimo más grande. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's really what we want to be opening ourselves up to. Así que eso es a lo que nos queremos abrir. Is the everything that we're being offered. Es a todo lo que nos estamos, estamos ofreciendo. So we could read the start of 122, couldn't we? Sí, vamos a leer el, la lección, el comienzo de la lección 122. So this is just to help us get in touch with our, with our faith. Esto es solo para ponernos en contacto con nuestra fe. And our trust in Jesus. Y nuestra confianza en Jesús. I heard someone say this is his sales pitch to us, <laughs> which made me laugh. Escuché a alguien decir que esto era algo muy importante para él. Are you okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Forgiveness offers everything I want. El perdón me ofrece todo lo que deseo. What could you want forgiveness cannot give? ¿Qué podrías desear que el perdón no pudiese ofrecerte? Do you want peace? ¿Deseas paz? Forgiveness offers it. El perdón te la ofrece. Do you want happiness, a quiet mind, a certainty of purpose, and a sense of worth and beauty that transcends the world? Desea ser feliz, tener una mente serena, certeza de propósito, y una sensación de belleza y de ser valioso que trasciende el mundo? Do you want care and safety and the warmth of sure protection always? Deseas cuidados y seguridad. ¿Y disponer siempre del calor de una protección segura? Do you want a quietness that cannot be disturbed? A gentleness that never can be hurt? A deep abiding comfort? And a rest so perfect it can never be upset? ¿Deseas una quietud que no pueda ser perturbada? ¿Una mansedumbre eternamente invulnerable? ¿Una profunda y permanente sensación de bienestar? Así como un descanso tan perfecto que nada jamás pueda interrumpirlo. All of this forgiveness offers you and more. El perdón te ofrece todo eso y más. It, so, it sparkles on your eyes as you awake and gives you joy with which to meet the day. El perdón pone un destello de luz en tus ojos al despertar y te infunde júbilo con el que hacer frente al día. It soothes your forehead while you sleep and rests upon your eyelids so you see no dreams of fear and evil, malice and attack. 
Acaricia atente mientras duermes y reposa sobre tus párpados para que no tengas sueños de miedo o de maldad, de malicia o de ataque. And when you wake again, it offers you another day of happiness and peace. Y cuando despiertas de nuevo, te ofrece otro día de felicidad y de paz. All this forgiveness offers you and more. El perdón te ofrece todo esto y más. That feels pretty worthy of our prayer. <laughs> Eso parece ser una oración digna de todo esto. Yeah. Yeah, just reading that makes it all worthwhile because sometimes you can just forget the reason why you're doing this. Solo leer esto realmente nos pone en contacto con qué es lo que realmente creemos porque a veces se nos puede olvidar qué es lo que está en oferta o lo que nos está queriendo dar. I was remembering when I very first got the course in miracles. Me recuerdo que cuando me dieron el curso por primera vez. And I started doing the lessons. Y empecé a hacer las lecciones. My ego did not like it. Al ego no le gustaba. And I started seemingly feeling worse. Y aparentemente me sentía peor. And I was thinking, why, why am I doing this? I felt, I felt better before. Y me pregunté, ¿por qué estoy haciendo esto? Because of this undoing. Me siento peor y era porque. Because of this undoing. Por este deshacer. And so, like, the ego was coming in like, oh, I, I wasn't giving everything to it. Y yo no le estaba dando todo the ego, esto. The ego El ego was, no le estaba dando todo. Yeah, the ego was getting the better of me. Él estaba agarrándome. So it can seem like an uphill struggle. Así que puede parecer como que vamos cuesta arriba. But what we're here to do today Pero lo que estamos aquí para hacer is to ignite the fire within. Es para encender esta llama dentro. And take on the words that Jesus is really offering us. Y tomar estas palabras que Jesús realmente nos está ofreciendo. And one of the first lines that I heard from the Course in Miracles, which kind of threw me back in my chair. Y una de las primeras partes del curso que escuché y realmente me impactó. Was nothing can disturb your peace. Fue que nada puede romper con tu paz. And I thought, wow, that's a pretty big statement. I definitely want that. Esa es una gran oración. Definitivamente quiero eso. So this is what he's offering us. He never offers anything half-heartedly like the Rumi prayer. Y esto es lo que nos está ofreciendo. Él no nos está ofreciendo nada con tibieza como la oración que estábamos leyendo. So we have to give our whole selves to this right here and now. Así que queremos darnos completamente a esto con todo nuestro corazón. Whatever it is in your heart right now. Lo que sea que está en tu corazón ahora. That needs to be lifted up. Que necesita ser entregado. We have to give everything to Tenemos that. Tenemos que dar todo a no, esto. With no exceptions. Sin excepciones. So that's what we feel praying is. <laughs> Eso es lo que sentimos que es la oración. <laughs> And so, yeah, that's definitely what I want to practice. Y definitivamente eso es lo que quiero practicar. Mm. So, if to pray, we have to look at the blocks. Así que para orar tenemos que ver los bloqueos a la oración. You, you want to say a bit more about that, the blocks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess we really have to see, like, where I'm not trusting. It's just a block to all the love to come in. Estos lugares donde siento que no estoy confiando. Realmente un bloqueo para que el amor pueda entrar. If I don't trust, it's just like... Yeah, it's like nothing can come in. Si no tengo esa confianza, es como que nada, nada puede entrar. So we are here to really give over these blocks to the Spirit, to see its nothingness. Lo que queremos hacer es entregarle al Espíritu estos bloqueos y ver que no son nada. But we have to be proven step by step. He's taking our hand mm -hmm. step by step. Nos tienen que Él nos tiene que mostrar. Paso a paso, él está tomando nuestra mano y nos está guiando. And, yeah, I really, really trust that he's with us. Realmente confío que él está con nosotros. And he is guiding us with so much love. Y que nos está guiando con tanto amor. Nothing bad can come from this. From this trust. Nada, nada malo puede venir de esta confianza. And realmente siento, 
I really feel that this yeah, it just went off. Hmm. When we pray, we don't have to be invested in an outcome. I, I just want to give this over, but I hope you give me exact the exact same thing that I want in form. And I don't feel that's the way it works. Y cuando estoy orando, y estoy orando nada más por una situación que se resuelva específicamente como quiero. Y no, es, no estoy siendo abierta a la respuesta. And I know that when I pray, the answer is coming. It's coming instantaneously. Y yo sé que cuando oro, la respuesta viene instantáneamente. The answer is being shown to us as we go. La respuesta se nos está mostrando, but we have to be in trust that it is coming to see it. Tenemos que estar en esta confianza que está viniendo, que la vamos a poder ver. Yeah, we were talking today, weren't we, about um, lesson 24, I do not know my own best interest. También estábamos hablando de la lección 24, no sé qué es lo mejor para mí. And it's like if you were doing the lessons every day. Es como que si estás haciendo las lecciones todo el tiempo. Day 24, he tells you, you do not know your own best interest. El día 24 te dice, no sabes qué es lo mejor para ti. So this is very early on in our training. Así que esto es muy temprano en nuestro entrenamiento. But he's saying, you, know, you don't know, but I do. And I'm taking care of you. <laughs> Él está diciendo, tú no sabes, pero yo sí sé, yo te estoy cuidando. Yeah, like he says, come as, come as children, come as little children. Como él dice, ven, vengan como niños pequeños. It's like a father, it's like being a three-year-old, and you don't know. You have to hold on to your father's hand to get up the steps, because you're never going to get up the steps. It's as simple sí. as that. Como un niño chiquito, tres años, que está realmente confiando en sus padres, tomándome de la mano, vamos a subir las escaleras porque no puedo hacerlo solo. Es igual. And the problem is that I think I know what's best for me. Y el problema es que yo creo que yo sé que es lo mejor para mí. And what I'm learning is truly I don't actually know that anymore. Y realmente lo que estoy aprendiendo es que no sé qué es esto. So it's really coming to that surrender. Es realmente llegar a esta, a esta rendición, a esta dejar ir. Really in our knees, de rodillas. Yeah, because when we open up, we can open up to all possibilities that are beyond what we can actually see in our own minds. Porque cuando estamos en esto, nos abrimos a un mundo de posibilidades que está mucho más allá de lo que pudimos haber imaginado. So there's the bigger gifts waiting for us. Y están los, estos regalos grandes esperando por nosotros. Shall we look at lesson 47? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, me encanta esta lección. I just love this lesson. <laughs> God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. Okay. If you are trusting in your own strength, you have every reason to be apprehensive, anxious, and fearful. Si solo confías en tus propias fuerzas, tienes todas las razones del mundo para sentirte aprensivo, ansioso y atemorizado. What can you predict or control? ¿Qué puedes predecir o controlar? What is there in you that can be counted on? ¿Qué hay en ti con lo que puedas contar? What would you give? What would give you the ability to be aware of all the facets of any problem? and to solve them in such a way that only good can come of it. ¿Qué te podría capacitar para ser consciente de todas las facetas de un problema y de resolverlos de tal manera que de ellos solo resulte lo bueno? What is there in you that gives you the recognition of the right solution and the guarantee that it will be accomplished? ¿Qué hay en ti que te permita poder reconocer la solución correcta y garantizar su concepción. So this is the most important bit. Así que esta es la parte más importante. Of yourself, you can do none of these things. Por ti mismo no puedes hacer ninguna de esas cosas. To believe that you can is to put your trust where trust is unwarranted. 
and to justify fear, anxiety, depression, anger, and sorrow. Creer que puedes es poner tu confianza en algo que no es digno de ella y justificar el miedo, la ansiedad, la depresión, la ira y el pesar. Who can put his faith in weakness and feel safe? ¿Quién puede poner, depositar su fe en la debilidad y sentirse seguro? Who can put his faith in strength and feel weak? Por otra parte, ¿quién puede depositar su fe en la fortaleza y sentirse débil? God is your safety in every circumstance. Dios es tu seguridad en toda circunstancia. His voice speaks for him in all situations and in every aspect of all situations, telling you exactly what to do to call upon his strength and his protection. Su voz habla por él en toda situación y en todos los aspectos de cada situación. Diciéndote exactamente qué es lo que tienes que hacer para invocar su fortaleza y su protección. There are no exceptions because God has no exceptions. En esto no hay excepciones porque en Dios no hay excepciones. And the voice which speaks for him thinks as he does. Y la voz que habla por él piensa como él. So now just going back to what was on your mind that's stopping you from trusting. Y ahora volviendo a lo que estaba en tu mente que te está deteniendo para confiar. So our invitation is again just to close your eyes. Así que nuestra invitación es de nuevo cierra tus ojos. Just get comfortable. Ponte cómodo. Let that thought that's blocking you. Deja, deja este pensamiento que te está bloqueando. And give everything to this moment. Y dale todo a este momento. Today we will try to reach past your own weakness to the source of real strength. Hoy trataremos de llegar más allá de tu debilidad hasta la fuente de la verdadera fortaleza. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. Now try to slip past all concerns related to your own sense of inadequacy. Trata ahora de deslizarte más allá de todas las preocupaciones relacionadas con tu propia sensación de insuficiencia. It is not by trusting yourself that you will gain confidence. Confiando en ti mismo no es la manera de adquirir confianza. But the strength of God in you is successful in all things. Mas la fortaleza de Dios en ti tiene éxito en todo. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. God is the strength in which I trust. Dios es la fortaleza en la que confío. So we hand all this over. Sí que entregamos esto. And let it go completely. Lo dejamos ir completamente. And trust. Y confiar. That he has us completely. Que él nos tiene completamente. And knows what's best for us. Y sabe que es lo mejor para nosotros. Thank you. Gracias.
So just when you're ready, taking your time. Así que toma un momento y cuando estés listo, you can begin to come back. Puedes empezar a volver a venir. A regresar. No, 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 Vamos a, a ver otro pedacito de la fe que encontramos. Yeah, just as we were sat waiting to come into the room. Mientras estábamos esperando entrar a esta habitación. I looked into the manual for teachers. El, el, vi en el, en el manual para el maestro. And the, um, the characteristics of the teacher of God. Las características del maestro de Dios. And we found um, faithfulness. Y encontramos la fe. So it seemed rather fitting. Así que tiene que ver con esto definitivamente. Mm. So this is the faith that we need. Así que esta es la fe que necesitamos. And this rounds up everything that we've been talking about. Y esto solo une todo lo que hemos estado hablando. The extent of the teacher of God's faithfulness is the measure of his advancement in the curriculum. El grado de fe de un maestro de Dios indica cuán avanzado se encuentra en su programa de estudios. Does he still select some aspects of his life to bring to his learning while keeping others apart? Pone en práctica este aprendizaje solo en algunos aspectos de su vida mientras mantiene otros aparte? If so, his advancement is limited and his trust not yet firmly established. De ser así, su progreso es lento y su confianza aún no se ha arraigado firmemente. Faithfulness is the teacher of God's trust in the word of God to setting all things right, not some, but all. La fe es la confianza que el maestro de Dios tiene de que la palabra de Dios ha de resolver todas las cosas perfectamente. Generally, his faith, faithfulness begins by resting on some problems, on just some problems, remaining carefully limited for a time. No solo algunas, sino todas. Comienza generalmente poniendo su fe en la resolución de solo algunos problemas, manteniéndola así cuidadosamente restringida por un tiempo. To give up all problems to one answer is to reserve the thinking of the world entirely, to reverse the, the thinking of the world entirely. Someter todos los problemas a una sola respuesta es invertir completamente la manera de pensar del mundo. And that alone is faithfulness. Y solo eso es fe. Nothing but that really deserves the name. Ninguna otra cosa merece que se le llame por ese nombre. Yet each degree, however small, is worth achieving. Con todo, vale la pena lograr cada avance, por pequeño que sea. So this feels like our gift to everybody today. Sí que esto parece ser nuestro regalo para todos ustedes el día de hoy. To trust more deeply than ever. Confiar más profundamente que nunca. To pray more harder than ever. Orar de una manera más fuerte que nunca. And to have absolute faith. Y tener fe absoluta. In everything that's being offered in the course. Y todo está siendo ofrecido en el curso. And you will be shown. You will be shown. Y, y se te va a ser mostrado. Vas a ser mostrado. Sí. It's guaranteed. Se te va a enseñar. Es garantizado. It's a guarantee. Es garantía. Sí. So as I said before, he's a very good salesman. Así como dije. It's guaranteed. Es un buen vendedor. Está garantizado. Complete guarantee from Completamente Jesus. Completamente garantizado por Jesús. So I'm going for that one. Así que voy por eso. I'll have two. 
Voy a tomar dos. So thank you very much for joining us. Muchas, muchas gracias por haber estado aquí con nosotros. Peace be with you always. La paz esté con ustedes siempre. Gracias. <laughs> I just feel overcome. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm just picking up on that theme through today, too. I'll step back and let him lead the way and just a strong, strong theme of trust and faith and really, really allowing that trust to remind us what we're doing it for and if maybe you're experiencing some struggles to just really hold Jesus' hand. Mm. Yeah, I just feel such a presence with everyone here, actually. Yeah. And yeah, just join such a holy purpose. Hmm. <laughs> 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 That's all we got. <laughs> Actually, I do have one last thing. I was, um, as we were, you know, we're in the studio here and we, we see all you guys up on the big screen and just like Peter was saying, just really feel you all actually like I I see all these faces and um I, I've not met most of you but I just I, I know you actually and um yeah the, I feel like the reason I'm able to know you is because we are sharing this beautiful purpose together and I'm just really grateful that you're all here joining us so that we just have this beautiful opportunity to extend to teach what we would learn and to just share share um, the miracles that we're experiencing uh, in our daily life because this is our life and thank you <laughs> yeah just as, like as we feel this presence with god we feel it with one another too it just becomes so reflective in everything we see so yeah i just feel so grateful <laughs> okay so, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back in about 10 minutes <laughs> we'll be back in about 10 minutes with um laverne and her show called free your mind and we're going to be diving more deeply into spirit in an experiential way walking you through uh, all of the steps so if you've not used spirit and you're a little curious or you you really just want to see how how it happens uh tune in really it just feels very vibrant Hmm. Okay, we'll join you then. So could you just share what is enlightenment? It's the state of mind in which there is no judgment or there's no duality, so there's no means and end. Uh, there's not those typical time components and, and time increments. In enlightenment, there's really no awareness of the passage of time. And so, when we call it a music and enlightenment festival, it's, it's everything merges together. There's no distinctions, there's no differences, there's no here and there, there's no before and after, there's nothing to be striven for or nothing to, to search for, it's this, there's such contentment with that. And that's what the, the joy is all about, it's very much rejoicing in just what is and not looking to for anything to change or anything to be any different. And I think that will be a draw because again, that's what the soul has a, a yearning for and, and it's a recognition of what is real and what's true of all that love. 
And when we have a world, of a linear world of the ego where there's so much change, nothing is constant, everything is in flux, uh, there is a feeling of instability, uncertainty, fear, doubt, and these are just illusory states of mind that are meant to be laid aside and risen above. And so that's what this enlightenment experience is. It's, it's the full rise mm -hmm. into awareness of self.
lot of opportunities on a daily basis to kind of allow the spirit to help us navigate the, our mind and the world that's projected from our mind. One time I was was asking the Holy Spirit of Jesus, I said, because I like to do maps. I always, even when I was in seventh grade, you know, I had to draw maps and color in countries and do all that. I'm very graphic. So I asked the Holy Spirit to give me a graphic representation, a map of the mind, so I could know what was going on. And the outer level was the level of perception. And then the emotions were right underneath it. And the thoughts were under the emotions. And then the beliefs were under the thoughts. And then the core, the bullseye, was desire. And I remember reading in the Course, truth will be returned to your awareness by your desire, as it was lost to your awareness by your desire for something else. So desire is at the core of everything. That's like our point of prayer, our point of power. But those beliefs that we hold on to are right outside that ring of desire. And until we get down to the underlying beliefs, it just seems as if that the world is outside of us, that our identity is shaky at best, and that we need a lot of approval and being liked in order to feel good about ourselves. When actually we have to learn to have integrity really deep integrity before we can actually reach that point of peace. So for me, I had to start to see how far am I willing to go with this integrity? How far am I willing to go where I actually start to experience that there's nothing outside of me? Uh, I had to start questioning everything about the world. Um, for example, um, when, when I would get disturbed about politicians and, and various political stances or whatever, you know, I had Jesus inside saying, you, you're not really involved in politics. Politics are in you. When I got upset about society, I said, I just am never going to be able to be peaceful as long as I'm living in this society. This culture, I will never be peaceful. Jesus would say, you are not in the society. The society is in you. It was always pointing me back to everything that I perceive is based on belief. All the way to the point that he said, is saying that, that there is no world apart from what you think. That everything we think is out there in the world is actually in consciousness, and we're still holding it in consciousness. We're still holding on to the beliefs and the concepts, and then tricking ourselves to think that the world is doing it to us, instead of us having the power. Us having, we can control the direction of our thinking. We don't have to succumb to ego thinking, we can actually align with God and think with God instead of trying to think against God. Hmm. Okay, hi again. So, yeah, we started this morning with Andy and Nicholas with tuning into to guidance, and then we were with uh, Ken and Anna with getting in touch with what's the uh, what's the block to feeling this connection with God. 
And now we're going to join Laverne with what to do when we get in touch with the block <laughs> or getting in touch with the block and raising it up. How do we do that? So yeah, with great, great pleasure, we're going to cross to Laverne and have a look at Spiri. Okay. Great. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah, I just um, want to first share that uh, my inspiration for this, doing this show, Free Your Mind, was um, really to extend this gift that I have experienced in using these mind tools, um, the Levels of Mind, Instrument for Peace, and now Spiri, um, the, the chat bot um, aspect of the of the process the that seems to be the most popular the most dynamic um, the coolest <laughs> of all and um, yeah the prayer that I've had for this show was to make it interactive like actually um, inviting people that are watching this show to um, open up to this idea of sharing uh, a present upset with with everybody uh, for the purposes of of going deeper with it and and healing healing the mind uh, looking at the underlying thoughts and beliefs uh, in order to to actually um, put forgiveness in action um, because for me in as a course in miracles student uh, it's been about it's always been the how questions that have come up for me like uh, you know, when someone says, well, all it is is about being aware that you're dreaming. And, and then the question that would come into my mind is, oh, how do you do that? You know, how do you do that when the intensity is up in the mind? So it just feels like um, the, these uh, mind tools are the how of how to practice forgiveness on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I wanted to do today is just... Uh, to um, pick somebody from the audience and actually um, go through a, a Spiri session with them and um, just some pre prerequisites to raising your hand uh, if you have something up in the mind. Uh, I really am hoping that um, it is something that's really present uh, that is, seems to be happening right now or that is something that you've done a Spiri session on and you haven't been able to move through it. Um, those would be a couple of um, prerequisites that I would have to just going through a Spiri session for everyone on this on the program today. So um, the other thing too is um, a lot of people have asked, you know, how can I, you know, do the mind training when I'm not in a community setting where, you know, we're actually doing everything here for the purposes of forgiveness and, and healing the mind. And, and I would say that using Spiri uh, and using these mind tools is, is the way to do that at home is just start practicing with them, just practicing much like a muscle, you know, that it'll get stronger and stronger in that way. And I also just want to say, if you do have some sort of an upset um, that that you're experiencing right now, and and you're not sure whether to raise your hand or not, I mean, I I would have to say that one of the indicators that maybe it is for you to to raise your hand is uh, is if you're feeling your heart racing, <laughs> or you're feeling you know a nervousness, like you know that's very common, and and it is you know that that cue to say, yeah, maybe it is for me to, to share this with the group. So, um, yeah, I just would like to open it up now so that we can actually jump into a session with somebody. And Carolina, I see you have your hand up. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Hi. Hi, uh, Carolina. Have I, you um, used Spiri before? Yes, yes, I'm using also the instrument for peace and the work of Byron Katie, so. <clears throat> That's great. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. I experience now exactly what you described. I feel I'm sweating, my heart is racing, and I, I, feel, I feel nervous. Uh, it's, it's a, I have a few upsets right now. I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> okay, so why don't I, um, 
we'll put the uh, Spiri session up. I'm going to ask Nicholas over in Camus to do that so that we can just start a session fresh and then we can dial into whatever the situation is that's going on in your mind right now. And if you have many, maybe we'll just look at the one that feels the, the strongest of, of those. So okay. we'll just wait right. for a second here until, until um, Nicholas puts that, the Spiri screen up. Okay. Tata, jak ten, to mi tu połóż na, na talerzu. Dobra, ja zaraz przyjdę. <laughs> okay, so this is actually uh, my Facebook uh, account. So, so Carolina, you'll be Laverne for <laughs> purposes of this demonstration because it's going to be asking questions um, as if it was directed to me. Okay. So, so the first question is how much time do we have to join? And I'm going to uh, say 20 minute session because we do have 20 minutes um, to go through um, a session today. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but 20 minutes is uh, probably one of our best times. Okay. Uh, Carolina, do you have some headphones that you can put on? We're getting a bit of echo on this end. Yes, yes, just a second. <laughs> so, Nicholas, you can just uh, go through this, uh, click on continue, because this is just some general questions before we jump into the actual session itself. So these, so these questions, questions that Nicholas is, is going, going through right now are just, just to encourage users to really give the full focus to the session for the 20 minutes and uh, to really have an effective Spiri session to try to make your responses short and concise uh, really helps to move the process along. Sometimes people use these as, a, as just a huge long paragraph upon paragraph of the issue. So, so it, it is nice to just boil it down into a, a short sentence, but for you right now, Carolina, I just would like you to just um, pray into, of, of all the things that seem to be going on in your life right now, which one, which situation right now seems to be the one that's the burning situation that you would just like to share with us the details of? The most present was, uh, I was sitting in the, in the common room uh, a minute ago with my father near me and it was the first time when I was listening to you and I was joining your meeting with my father so close, even though he doesn't understand anything uh, in, in, in English, uh, I, I just I felt really nervous. I felt I felt stressed. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe I, I I like I'm afraid of his reaction. Uh, so, Carolina, just to summarize, just what you said that you you get unhappy when you you think about your father listening to this show, or. Can you just get specific around what it is that that you're noticing the stressful feelings about? Yeah, I I'm I I'm I get unhappy when I think he will be displeased with me. Okay, and okay, so my uh, father listening to this show and being displeased. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Go ahead and we can continue from there, Nicholas. So it's going to ask if it was in the, in the past or future, and obviously it's something that just happened. So we can, we can just click on the past there. 
truly nothing ever happens in the now. So that's really, it's either <laughs> happened or it's, you're afraid it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So you're unhappy about my father listening to the show and being displeased. Mm -hmm. It's correct. It's correct. Okay. So can you just describe some of the feelings that are up for you um, because when you think about your father being displeased? Panic. Mm -hmm. uh, suspiciousness. I don't know if it's a feeling. <laughs> suspiciousness. Um, stress. Uh, Fear, mm. paranoia, paranoia, <clears throat> and I feel uh, blinded. I feel like everything is racing in my mind, and I'm completely not present. I'm, mm. I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm, I'm just disconnected. Mm. Disconnected. Okay, she also said paranoia and stress. and stress, Nicholas. It's so helpful when you can really dial into the uh, feelings of, that are coming up during a, a stressful situation like this. And, you know, we do, Spiri also offers examples for you to really get to dial into what's going on in the mind. So, but I feel like you really have a handle on it. Um, <laughs> just from what yeah. you just described. <laughs> so, I, am, I am very, very into uh, feelings feelings are very present in my life for, for mm. the uh, whole time and it's it's not really difficult for me <laughs> to get yeah. in touch with it so yeah <laughs> okay we can continue nicholas and the course even says what is the one right use of judgment is how you feel so it's always you know using those feelings as a barometer of, of whether or not you know you're you're on the right track or not so mm -hmm. so just just a reminder to continue um, yeah just being in touch with those feelings so is there someone that you blame for your father listening to this show and being displeased are you is there someone to blame yeah maybe my, myself for uh, opening the show near him yeah okay yeah and uh and uh, sorry think <clears throat> And there's also some some yeah I I would lie if I if I said I don't also project the blame on 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 father a little bit. Uh, it, there is this kind of if he's displeased, it's his fault, uh, and uh, he's he's immature, and yeah, this 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 kind of story that uh, that. It, he doesn't, he wouldn't know what he's uh, talking about and, mm -hmm. you know, and so, yeah, I think this is a bl blaming, blaming, uh, whatever, whatever, just, just mm -hmm. to blame anything for, for feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Just when you said, you know, that you should have put your computer away when he came in the room and the blame on yourself feels accurate, to, you mm -hmm. know, there may be other people to blame in any situation, but usually that first one that comes to mind is, is usually it. So, okay. so we'll just leave, we just put yourself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, is there something you're afraid will happen because of um, your father listening to this show and being displeased? Um, I'm afraid that he will, that he will share my paranoia and, and when I come to Mexico, that he will be a little bit more stressed out than, than he seems to be. And yeah, that, that, that this will just uh, escalate, you know. I, 
into something ridiculous. And yeah. Okay. So you fear <laughs> that your uh, my father's fear will or my father's paranoia will escalate. Yeah. That sounds correct. Yeah. When you come to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. mine, mine. When I go, <laughs> yeah, there you go. To Mexico, you're right. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. What were you gonna say? Uh, again? Did you have something else to say? You can continue, Nicholas. Uh, yeah, that my paranoia uh, as well. I, I guess because I mm -hmm. would just, I would just uh, bother myself with with this. Oh, how does he feel that I should do something about this? Or I shouldn't, I would just shut him off. I, I will just uh, put a distance between us. It's my two strategies. Either I close off entirely or I'm trying to meddle in something. <laughs> mm. And it never works. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... Since you feel panic, suspiciousness, fear, blinded, paranoia, and stress, it's possible that the way you perceive my father listening to this show and being displeased is not the way it really is. Are you willing to look beyond the way you're seeing this and to look within your mind for answers? Please. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. <laughs> Let's let's move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> That's fantastic. Your willingness to, to look within opens your mind to infinite solutions. Uh, we can just go past the summary. I feel like we've covered that. Yes, it's correct. Okay, so all of this proves, uh, Carolina, that you are right about some negative belief that you're certain is true about yourself, others, or the world. So that's what we're getting down to now is, is trying to identify what that belief is. When you oh. think about my father listening to this show and being displeased, what negative belief feels true to you? And there may be many that come to your mind, but choose the one that feels the strongest to you. I should hide the, this game immediately. I should hide or or be or not not uh, how how to put it into words. Uh, I should uh, be careful with how much transparent and open I am. Yes, this is this is my this is this bit. Okay, that sounds perfect in terms of an identification of a belief <laughs> that seems to be showing up as a father being displeased. <laughs> yeah. How transparent and open I am. Do you feel like it's only transparent and open around your father or oh, transparent and open, period? Uh, transpired in open period, definitely. Okay, so you can take out to my father. Okay. Okay, so you said thinking about my father. We'll have to just scroll back up a bit. Uh, so you said thinking about my father listening to this show and being displeased, feeling panic, suspiciousness, fear, blinded, paranoia, stress, blaming yourself and fearing my father's paranoia will escalate when I go to Mexico, prove to you that I should be careful about how transparent <laughs> and open I am. <laughs> is, I be, is this the belief? Yes, that's the belief that we're looking at. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at this together, this belief. So in order to let go of an upset, 
you have to first be willing to see the part you play and why the upset happened in the first place. Mm -hmm. Would you like to learn that there is a way to see the part you play in this? Um, not to feel more guilty about it, but so you can let the upset go? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, splendid. And since you don't like how you feel, do you want to be right about what you think is going on or do you want to be happy? I was right my whole life. It didn't work. <laughs> okay, well, happy then. <laughs> <laughs> we know that one. <laughs> someone say to me just the other day, I know I feel miserable, but I just want to be right about this. <laughs> <laughs> so in your willingness to be wrong about what you think is going on, you've just opened your mind to a lasting solution to this problem. Are you ready for that lasting solution? Oh my, yes. <laughs> at, at least I hope so. <laughs> least I... Okay. If it were true that something outside of you was causing you to feel bad, you would in fact be powerless to do something about it. Mm. That's when we see something outside of us that we don't want to see within, it's called projection. Just a reminder that what we're seeing outside of us is really within us. Are you open to seeing that it's because of projection that you feel powerless to change how you feel right now? Yes, because I can't change it in mm -hmm. any other way. Mm. <coughs> projection is why the causes of your feeling panic, suspiciousness, fear, blinded paranoia and stress seem to be yourself and the fear that my father's paranoia is going to escalate when I go to Mexico. Projection is so useless. <laughs> yeah, but it seems real when it's happening. Yeah. We can't just say that and but still feel the reactions. We have to really get down deeper in the mind and see what's going on. So, mm -hmm. but by seeing the causes outside of your mind, you're actually keeping the bad feelings in place. We just said that. Mm. Are you ready to find the real source of your unhappiness, Carolina? Yes. Okay. I hope it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Thinking about my father listening to this show and being displeased feeling panic, suspiciousness, fear, blinded, paranoia, stress, and blaming yourself, and fearing my father's paranoia will escalate when I go to Mexico, are the direct result of believing something that isn't true. This is a really important step in the process in that we're going to now take it back into where the real problem is, if you will, and it's a, it's a false belief. Your belief that I should be careful about how transparent and open I am simply isn't true. Hmm. Can you feel that, Carolina, just as it's being said in any, in even a small way? Yeah, there, there is something. <laughs> there is something. Okay. So you think you feel bad because... Of, of your father listening to this show and being displeased, you think that's the reason why you feel bad, but it's really because you believe that you should be careful about how transparent and open you are. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's playing out all the time, even when I'm here with you, you know, speaking right now, it's still the same story. How, how open should I be? 
mm-hmm. how much can I say where, where when I should stop talking you know this this control mechanism are you still thinking it's because of your father listening or is it because of us now yeah, it's it's I I don't feel it's it it really it really is has nothing to do with anything here it's just some some concept in me that 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 uh, watch out danger danger mm. <laughs> danger and really uh, click yes now Nicholas okay we're just going to move it along and we just have a few more minutes here but this mm-hmm. even this process if we don't even get all the way through it's like even looking when you go into the direction of looking at a belief like we are right now, it's like the mind can actually start aligning with what, what really the truth is mm-hmm. when it sees what is false. So you're, you're only upset when someone or something mirrors back to you a, a belief that you've pushed out of awareness. Are you open to seeing that my father listening to this show and being displeased is only mirroring back the belief that I should be careful about how transparent and open I am. Mm, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's like I'm using all of you to to justify this. Yeah. Just ca- continue, Nicholas. So now we want to just look at the desire because this is an important component of this process to to ask you, Carolina, what did you want to have happen instead of what happened? It's usually the opposite of the situation. So in your case, it's likely the opposite of my father listening to this show and being displeased. What did you want to have happen instead? Uh... Uh, and can I uh, just ask some question now mm-hmm. um, about this step? Uh, I notice, especially uh, for for a short time now, that I don't really know what I actually wanted to happen. Even if I think it's the, like the opposite, uh, then I, when I go deeper in it, I, I feel like it isn't really what I wanted either because I would still have this paranoia even if you would be so oh happy and it's so cool I would still have this paranoia and so what what to do with this yeah I would say I always encourage people to really go with specifics so with the desire because sometimes people like users want to jump to it I want what I wanted is to be peaceful and happy. That's actually not really what they want. Mm -hmm. I would say it's usually the opposite of what happened. So even just your father, you know, not listening to the show, it wouldn't have come up like this discomfort that you're feeling uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be up in your mind right now. Can you feel that? Like if he hadn't listened to the show, (laughs) you wouldn't Mm -hmm. even have an upset right now. And Mm -hmm. so can you see that that was what the desire was in the moment? Yeah, um, I can even generalize it. I can even generalize it into I, that I want to be in control. My desire was to be in control of the situation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can just, and let's just go with the not listening. And then I, I think that oftentimes there's more, like even more spirit sessions mm-hmm. that can come up as a result of even doing one and you know not that there's a a problem a uh, more of a problem but it's actually like stirring up the the hornet's nest of other beliefs that are underneath their control Mm -hmm. or not feeling safe to be open and transparent so but one thing that uh, the desire is saying this is, is if you believe that I should be careful about how transparent and open I am Mm-hmm. You'll naturally want my father not to listen to this show to be happy and at peace. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just click on yes, it's correct, Nicholas, because we just have a few more minutes here. But um, it's just even seeing that, uh, yeah, this belief is coming up because precisely because your father showed up in the room. So mm-hmm. really everything in this world works together for your good. 
Mm. Let's continue. Um, what you think is the cause of your upset, Carolina, is not the cause at all. Mm -hmm. And the choice to feel panic, suspiciousness, fear, blinded, um, paranoia, stress is a choice to believe I should be careful about how transparent and open I am. It's an attempt to see the cause as my father listening to this show and being displeased and then feeling bad as its effect. But it really is the belief. So now we're ready for so the final um, step in the whole spirit process. So we can just go ahead and scroll down, Nicholas. Um, just a high five because you've come this far. <laughs> <laughs> that not all countries know what a high five is. <laughs> <was> like, okay. <laughs> Given what you know now, um, do you want to hold on to this de desire that my father not listen to this show, or do you want to choose peace of mind instead? Yes, I, I want to choose I want to choose peace of mind and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then one final question, and that's a great gift for yourself, actually, to choose peace of mind instead of something else to be different. And do you want to hold on to the negative belief that I should be careful about how transparent and open I am, or do you want to go for peace of mind instead? <laughs> Let's go for peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a game show. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Finally! <laughs> Congratulations, Carolina. By questioning the belief that I should be careful about how open and transparent I am, you're opening your mind to present peace and innocence. So. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just one last question. I keep saying that. Will you commit to questioning this belief for as long as it takes to go away because you don't like the way that it makes you feel? Definitely. I don't see uh, any other time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have mighty companions around too that can remind you if you hold back on being open and transparent that you're co you've committed to actually questioning this belief. So... Yes. Okay, well, I feel like that's the end of our show today. I really appreciate your willingness to just be transparent and open with us, Carolina. Oh, thanks. That. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and I think we'll see you soon in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, you, I, I, would just, I would just add one thing. I see myself in Mexico over and over and over again. So I am there even I am not there. Oh. I am everywhere even if I am not everywhere. Just... <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. We love you. you. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <Thank you>. Bye. <laughs> what a sweetie. <laughs> Thanks, Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Laverne and Carolina, for just such a beautiful demonstration of Spiri, but really just um, how you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into your mind. And Carolina, is so beautiful to even hear you laughing as, as you're even discovering, oh my God, I'm thinking and believing those things. It's like, yeah, that's the lightheartedness we can really take this with. And, and certainly Spiri is such a helpful tool. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been joining with Carolina a bit on the phone too, just before her, her trip over to Mexico. So it's such a joy. Like <laughs> we're starting this process already. Like we're going deep, so deep already. You're not even here. <laughs> so what a joy. Okay. Beautiful. Well, we've got uh, another show coming up in just a few minutes, about 10 minutes or so. We've got Leap with Susan and that's a quantum based show so um tune into that she's got a special guest this week jason warwick and uh, i think a really beautiful clip and just a, a a deep mind expanding sharing so tune in in about 10 minutes okay
so afraid of the unknown. I'm so afraid to be alone. I try to hear your guiding voice, but still I don't know where to go. And I see your hand next to mine, and I'm holding on so tight. Please promise me you never. Singing of holiness 
Okay, we are back. So, I think we'll just cross over live to uh, Susan and then Jason. <laughs> oh, hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, <laughs> so, we're here for a episode of Leap. <laughs> I'm very happy to say I have Jason Warwick joining me today on the show. So it's exciting. Let's take a leap. <laughs> We're going to take a leap today. <laughs> a leap of, leap of faith. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the thoughts I had in mind for today was something called the observer effect in, in quantum physics. And there's a clip actually I want to show shortly, but before going into that, um, I felt like, and I just sort of realizing or something that this show today is um, in some way an answer to a prayer. Um, because I was just telling Jason a few minutes ago how um, there's just, there's been this upset that I've had um, related to my 12 year old son and that, well, is kind of using it as a, as an example where I'm, I've been feeling a bit stuck and feeling like I want to see beyond this. I want to see this differently. Um, just not to go into it too much, but I had a call a few days ago with, with him and I just, seem to interpret something about about him on the call I, his facial expression looked a certain way and his tone of voice sounded a certain way and i decided oh i think he's depressed and yeah and so there's something about just really having a, a prayer to to be really wrong about what i I'm perceiving that somehow what we're going to talk about today is going to help answer that. Uh, and I don't know how, <laughs> not at all actually, but I feel like maybe the start, the start place might be just to, well, let's see here. Well, before I, before I play the clip, I think the start point is just a, a quote, course quote that came into mind last night, which was, I think, workbook six, which says, I'm never upset for the reason I think. And that somehow that, that quote, and I know there's lots of others in the course that kind of say, say the same thing, but just wanting my prayer, I feel, is just to have a lived experience um, that what I'm seeing is not, is not true in that I'm not upset for the reason I think, and I want to see beyond this. So, so yeah, maybe we'll just start with playing this clip, which is from, uh, what's it from? It's from Captain Quantum. So some of you maybe have seen this before. It's, it's actually from, uh, from the movie, What the Bleep, that came out many, many moons ago. And it, uh, it just goes into, in a, in a really beautiful way, what the observer effect is. So it's about five minutes, so I just invite you to sink in and just, you know, let this Holy Spirit, you know, show you, show you what, what's really going on, as I'm going to do as well. So I think, Nicholas, if you want to roll them in cameras. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out, striking the back wall 
with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands. Good so far. Now. Let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter. Like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, Two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought. Maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So, they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. <laughs> and it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing. Ooh. <laughs> How does that answer your question about what's your son's name? Ronan. Ronan. To me, I love this clip so much. We actually made a quantum module in uh, in Moodle Mystical Mind Training program. But the key of this whole experiment to me was basically when you know you could see all the particles seemingly acting like waves as infinite possibilities. It's almost like everything that we see, perceive, and hear. It's like it's all just this wave of potential. 
And then what happens when they put this observer in there, the little eye, then the only way that it can actually see a particular thing is for the particle to act like a particular um, a particular thing, particle, particular. <laughs> and so they're, they're like together. They're the same thing. You cannot separate the two. So the very fact that, you know, you, you see or that your son is depressed is not separate from you. It's not a real thing apart from what it is you desire, which is why Laverne's um, instrument for peace or the Spiri session was so valuable because you can't change anything on the form. You're only going to see what it is what it is you want to see based on your beliefs. And well, then people would say, well, why, why would you want to see your son's depressed? Well, I would say that's not on a conscious level, but when you want to hide from God, what's a good way to hide from God but to make up a child that's depressed that you have to then be a mother to try to fix that for eternity and lifetime after lifetime until you get it right. It's a good way to hide from God. And for those of us that know being in community, you know, the mother concept is you know, all the other ones, it's like, okay, we do this one, we do that, we do that one, but okay, the mother concept, you know, it takes a special breed to go after that. And what I mean by that is, you know, really nobody's going to talk to you even about that experience, except those who have gone through it, because it's such a taboo, a taboo subject. So to me, that clip, it not only answers that, it answers absolutely everything. Everything is an infinite possibility. You, you can't even wake up in the morning without the instant your eyes open, like projecting what it is you want to see, but based on your belief system. So our whole job every day, every hour, every second, the course says even a minute or a second or even less, you're choosing what it is you want to see. And that's why you got to get back to this desire. Do I want to see a world I made or do I want to see, see the world through, through God's eyes or through the Holy Spirit's eyes? And if you wake up depressed or you have emotions and, you're seeing it through the world the way you want to see it. And that's what we say. We have to give it over, give it over. The funny thing is, because we were talking this morning at, at breakfast, and you had this feelings like, I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing it wrong, because I'm still seeing my son is depressed. And to me, it's like, oh, my God, I was so grateful you were sharing that and letting this up and, and not hiding it. And we said, just say it a thousand times more, because it's not really that, but you need to to give this up and not, you're not failing you're like succeeding because this is coming up into awareness and it's only the ego that wants to judge it or there i went really far here with this clip but yeah this is nice. thank you <laughs> yeah does everybody really Everyone on the watching, do you, did you get that clip? Did you really feel the potential of that? Basically, they were saying at the subatomic level, they're proving what the Course is saying, that nothing exists independent of an observer. It's all just potential. It's the quantum field. And the quantum field, as we use it, is, is an experience. When you're in the experience of being done through, of remembering who you are, you see everything as just potentials playing out and there's no interpretation or judging them as good or bad. It's when you become a separate person with eyes and ears and look for a certain thing that you pull out of that field of potential, a very specific outcome, because you want to see it. And the instant you let the desire go, it drops. That's the whole journey. The whole journey is letting go of that very specific want to be seen. It's like over and over again, letting that, letting that go. You can wake up with quantum. That's why you have a whole show <laughs> devoted to it. Yeah, well, that was actually one of my questions I had was around can, can quantum, like clips like this, be used in a practical way? Like, you know, like yeah. in a way that pe people can actually yeah. you know, turn to them when they're, when they're having healing and like, show me that, yeah. that I'm wrong actually oh, yeah. about, 
everything I'm seeing or what I think is going on or, you know, whatever. That's, I feel like that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of doing yeah. here. So it's like, <laughs> there we go. It's, yeah. And I can feel something like it's like, there's something like, yeah, like the spirit is, is behind all of it in a way. It's yeah. like kind of like coming in, oh, by the way, or yeah. I'm going to use science to try and, you know, show you something that just how wrong you are yeah, <laughs> kind exactly, of thing. So. Exactly. I think it can be a pathway. I mean, for me, it was, I didn't found the course and I was reading Freetalk Caprica's book or whatever, the Tao of Physics, the Tao of Physics. And the whole book was for that one point at the end where he said, when they used that uh, CERN particle accelerator in is it Switzerland or whatever. Higgs boson. Higgs, Higgs, Higgs boson. boson. And they started trying to find out what these you know, particles would break up into, depending on the measuring instrument they used, mm. was what subatomic particle they would see. And it was like, it blew my mind. So you mean the particle only arrived depending on the instrument that you used. Mm. It's just like, mm. Mm. That's a, that was a mystical experience for me. And every time we come back to that experience, like I watched the whole What the Bleep one time with the Spirit, and I said, what is the point of this whole What the Bleep? And I just kept hearing over and over, you cannot separate the observed from the observer. You cannot separate. That's the, and if you use all these videos, there's ones on superpositioning, there's ones on entanglement. There's, they're all saying the same thing, that you, everything is one. And you can't mm -hmm. separate the observer from the observer. So watch these videos mm -hmm. over and over again to just keep reminding yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a whole module in a mystical mind training program called Quantum Awakening. Yeah, I guess many of you might not have done it, but if you want to just do that every day, you can go in and watch these clips and get reminders. Mm -hmm. and there's even a quiz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, just uh, going back to the, the, just the clip we just saw too, it, what really kind of, resonates for me right now is just how it seems to be saying that that my son doesn't even really exist <laughs> like it's just purely it's like it's like in my head <laughs> like you know like that something about it's only when I look it's like otherwise like right now for example I'm not looking you know <laughs> it's like it actually doesn't even exist like you know like there's something yeah. that feels really deep about that yeah. to me like that it's only when you look that something seems to appear and then mm -hmm. When you stop looking, it's actually it actually completely falls out of existence, which mm -hmm. you know it's pretty radical stuff, yep. you know. And I, I feel like that's you know, you know, I can't be reminded of that too much <laughs> in a way because that's like yeah. Do you yeah. see the importance of that? Why, like we talk about guidance. Andy did a show on guidance with Nicholas, and the reason that for importance of guidance because if you say you make a call, for example, mm -hmm. out of guilt to the, the family out of guilt. It's coming from something's wrong. I've abandoned you. You know, somebody's doing something wrong. You were going to pull out a world to witness to that guilt. And it just, it reaffirms it. But when you listen to guidance and you call when you're happy and you want to extend it a miracle, you don't see a son that has unkempt fingernails and it's like this, but you could go around the room and even in your own life. There's probably so many stories where the son is like, Mom, I'm, I'm so happy you're not here and you're, you're following, <laughs> following your calling, you know, witnessing to that very, very thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because the, 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 natural, the natural tendency of the ego is just, to, is just to pull the witnesses that it wants to see. Yeah. Like, like the observer effect, like just, yeah. I just want to, like nothing, nothing comes unbidden to me. I think there's a line from the chorus that says, you know, I, you know, basically everything that I see is what I, what I want to see. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not following guidance, then it makes sense that I, I'm going to be, you know, seeing, seeing a world that, you know, that I made up basically, I think is true. So. Yeah. yeah, I do want to hear more about what you were saying about the unified field, though. Like somehow. <laughs> well, that, last night I told her that when I was doing the talk with David at the movie gathering, 
at some point I heard Jesus, I want to talk more about the quantum field. And I said, yeah, I hope you do too. <laughs> it's like, mm. there's something about that. that Because I was just in the experience doing that movie and, and waking up this morning that the quantum field really is, is just an experience of who you are. Mm. Yeah, and to me, it's really just about, it's just another way of saying forgiveness, being so open to being wrong about everything that I think and perceive. And like I was saying, just keep giving it over, giving it over, pulling the eye back mm. from if you could remember that little eye that was looking for the particle. If you could just imagine just closing the eye and mm. saying, show me, show me and being willing. I mean, I've got, I told you this story yesterday, but I feel like as we get into being miracle workers and teachers of God, this it just gets more and more expanded because one time I showed up uh, with a friend in New York at at a, uh, a house for Christmas. And it was actually the guys who, the, son, the three sons of the guy who invented the, what do you call the thing that washes windows? The squeegee or something like that. And there was these massive houses, like each house was $10 million. And I just showed up and, didn't know who they were they didn't really know me and as I walked in the door I said okay Jesus I'm here only to be truly helpful I do not know what to say or what to do who I am I walked in and then this gentleman greets me hi my name's Rob what's your name I'm Jason he said what do you do and here we go I was like I heard quantum physics teacher in my mind so I said I'm a quantum physics teacher <laughs> <laughs> and, and he got so excited. He's like, oh, that's so amazing. My son is in quantum physics in school. And he has this great relationship with his teacher. You guys can talk all night. And I thought, you better have me, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I, I was into it, but not that into it. <laughs> and so I walked in, and it turned out that we, I knew enough of it, and I knew what I already just told you, that when you can collapse the observer and the observe, that's the point that we ended up having the most amazing talk about non-dual and Zen and, and quantum physics at this huge table with probably 12 of us. And the spirit was just directing the whole conversation and, and being willing to not be identified with a person that, that thinks it knows something or doesn't know something and just being willing to be used so fully in every encounter. And for me, I had to let go of the idea of what truth is and, Truth and lies. Truth is, is being done through by Jesus and saying what he, he guides you to say. You know, if, if you wanted to ask if I had some kind of certificate, I didn't have a certificate, but when Jesus says, you're a quantum physics teacher and I'm going to use, I'm going to use this temporary profession that doesn't even mean anything to wake up the world, so to speak, then you better line up with that kind of thinking that's truth so to speak or a reflection of truth and so I've had a lot of fun with the journey in terms of remembering the quantum field through that way being done through over and over again not just focusing on what do I got to let go of but actually kind of accepting new concepts and context to help expand the mind and you you know facing this child thing I don't think you would have made it this far if you hadn't have temporarily accepted miracle worker or even member of a community or head of admin. I mean, maybe you could describe for everybody what it's like being the head of admin <laughs> in Living Miracles. <laughs> Does well. it help you stay in the quantum field? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I'm interviewing you. Yeah, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a little bit like being a, a like a, or an orchestra conductor in a way, because there's always like a thousand things going on at once. And I feel like the spirit brought that to me because I needed it. Like I needed, I needed a lot of help, like to keep my mind stable and to, to keep, keep me serving actually. Cause there's either, it's, to me, it's either I'm either in, in the mind of service and, and just giving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if I, if I'm not there, mm -hmm. I turn in, turn inward and it becomes, it becomes about, um, you know, the personal self, mm -hmm. which is about 
I don't know, like feeling like I'm a, a body alone in the world. I don't know what's going on. You know, and it, there's a whole thing tied up in that. So it's like, and many, 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 many times I've been like in that dark place and then I something would come in in my area, my function, that would pull me right out of it, you know, above the battleground, so to speak. And I would just be back up into into that service and that joy and that, you know, that, that vibe of, mm-hmm. of, of happy, happiness, actually. Mm-hmm. Like, and not fully understanding how that happened, but it's like, oh, okay, I'm back again. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you. And, yeah. and so that, that, to me, is part of the, the cleaning that needs mm-hmm. to happen in my own mind so that I don't, so I can just gently let go of that personal hold, you know, on mm-hmm. the self, the self-concept kind of thing. So. Did you ever dream when you were a child of being the head of admin? Sure. absolutely not <laughs> not in a million years <laughs> and it's, it's something that's so when it's given it's so mm-hmm. amazing because i remember you get off these phone calls with different government agencies irs or even the canadian tax revenue whatever and in your own personal life you would be like oh i would never want these calls but you just knew you had to do them and and just handling everything that needed to be handled with such integrity and and clarity and just healing the beliefs and the authority problem mm-hmm. through yeah. a symbol of living miracles. So this, yeah, this is quantum. That's <laughs> <laughs> what quantum looks like. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's good. So there's just something to me right now about just making quantum practical, like somehow bringing, bringing, it's, it's like a like a coming of age or, or some feeling like it's time it's time for quantum to be made more available to 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 people like mm-hmm. it's not people out there but it's just for me <laughs> mm-hmm. like it just somehow is more available to for the healing of the mind like you know like mm-hmm. somehow this like this it's it's like a, it's like something that that can be tapped like an untapped resource in a way in the on the spiritual path mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm a Course in Miracles student, and I do my lessons, and I practice with, you know, the spirit every day. But it feels very different. Like it feels like it's such a different angle, mm-hmm. of, like, you know, just the way the spirit can work in in mm-hmm. in the mind to, to actually just show us how, mm-hmm. you know, how how wrong we are about so many different things. Like we have no idea, and so, yeah, it's, yeah. So I feel like that that's also a prayer right now is to, you know, just to watch watch how this is going to unfold and you know how the, how how i could be used in in a way that that might be part of that i'm not sure i'm not really sure but it just feels there's something underneath all of this that feels really good mm, beautiful so. yeah i actually read what is quantum today on the web and they said the quantum refers to the least amount of anything so a quanta of milk would be the least amount of particles of milk, we call mm-hmm. it quanta of milk, a quanta of light. Is a, mm-hmm. And I thought that's a beautiful description for almost like how the Holy Spirit works. It wants to give you, save you the most amount of time and give you the least amount of effort to wake up from the journey. So mm-hmm. it's like, let's take a quanta of guidance to wake up to <laughs> a perfect amount. Mm-hmm. I was hoping that would <laughs> oh, two minutes. You could even post, mm. if you have some kind of a page, you could post more of these clips that you find. Mm. Some, if I have some kind of a page. Some kind of quantum, do we have a quantum page? Right. We do. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do feel something about this needs to be shared more. So, yeah, maybe maybe that's it. This is, somehow this could be put out there more for everyone. Okay, well, feels like we're we've come to the end of another another show. We'll see what the spirit has has in mind next. But thank you, everyone, for for being part of this. I'm really grateful, and thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, thank you. For, for all of all of this. Okay. Thank you. Everyone. Bye. Okay. Wow. This is so cool. <laughs> Actually, I had a quantum experience during that show. <laughs>
because I had a communication today and I, you know, just during the show and it felt like it was um, a distraction in my mind. Like I felt distracted and I felt like it was a problem. Like I had a problem with this particular communication. And I just noticed my mind kept on going there. Like, how can I extend when I'm feeling like I have this problem in my mind? You know, what do I do with that? So just during this show here, you know, I just had this willingness like, okay, spirit, I really want you to show me where the problem is in my mind. And I kind of, I kind of zoomed in like that quantum experience, like the observer kind of going into the particles and like, you know, there was somewhere in there where I was deciding to be right about there being a problem. And I just heard in my mind, you want to be right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> and then I just decided oh, when I just saw that, it just lifted actually. It's just that decision. Like I want to be right. So I thought that was so cool. It's like, you're watching, it's like, you know, watching my, like, when we're not actually zoomed in, we don't know what's going on. It's just a distortion. Like, what's going on here? Like, you know, it's the distortion pattern. But then it's like, when there's that, you know, desire to want to go in and see what's actually going on in the mind, it's like we're watching our thoughts zoom through like those particles. We're watching all our thoughts and we can just watch where, where we're making the decision of being right, which slip to go through. Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Beautiful, Peter. Yeah, I just, I feel very, really grateful for your example and all the examples you guys were sharing, Susan and Jason, because it's like, you're right. Like, how does this, how is this practical? Like, how can I experience these, these teachings, which maybe feel like particles wait like what? <laughs> how can that be related to our own experience? And in, in a way that, that feels miraculous actually <laughs> so that's beautiful that's beautiful i'm just grateful for the other perspective that's cool <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's it's quantum, quantum. <laughs> <laughs> okay these shows are just like a prayer session for us i mean it's like church or something like i don't know it's miraculous so okay so coming up in the next 14 13 minutes we're going to have our last show, and it is uh, The Last Step with Jeffrey. So stay tuned in with us, and we'll join with you then. Yeah, I think... This book is designed to give, give you a, a tool that can be used by the Holy Spirit, higher self, to really burst into an experience, burst into a huge insight that even though linear time seems to be laid on so thick and the unconscious mind seems to be so, so filled with false thoughts and false beliefs that it gives you a way to start to navigate quickly, you know, it actually can save a lot of time if you can start to follow and relate to some of these movie parables. You know, there's seven in there in the book and and they're amazing little parables, teaching parables and tools, you know, to help you get into the experience of true healing and true forgiveness. So in that sense it's a very good use of time. Even though time was made by the ego and not created by God, its spirit can really use time in a very useful way to collapse it and to show its impossibility. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why I really chose to use uh, these parables and these movies, because in a way it's it's a, it's a way of softly getting swept off your feet and taken into the divine love that you truly are, seeing that all that spiritual self-love, that Christ love that you are, that's what this is all about.
In this video, we're going to show you how to wake up with movies using MWGE. What we know about the mind is that it doesn't differentiate between the emotions it experiences while watching a movie and the emotions it experiences in day-to-day -day life. And that's how we're able to heal our mind with movies. You first want to pick a movie to watch that supports your spiritual awakening. You can do that using the Emotion Theme Index located under the Reviews drop-down menu. All of the movie reviews on MWGE are indexed by the emotions and main healing themes in the movie. At the top of the index page, we see the eight main index categories of reviews. I have a block that I'm ready to remove from my life. I click on that category and I'm shown all of the block's topics. My issue is that I feel like a victim of the world and I'm ready to heal that belief. I click on victimization and I'm shown all of the reviews that have victimization as one of the healing topics covered in that movie. At this point, I'm able to browse through the movie reviews. I'm feeling a resonance with the movie Black Swan, so I first want to obtain the movie from a streaming video or DVD rental service. I also want to download the Mind Tools for use during the movie. I can find the Mind Tools under the Getting Started drop-down menu. When I'm ready to watch the movie, I'll read the review first. This helps me to stay focused on the movie's healing themes rather than getting lost in the storyline. Attack it! Come on! While watching Black Swan, I notice upsetting emotions come up when I see the main character, Nina, hurting herself. The upset is my cue to pause the movie and fill out a mind tool. If I can fill out a worksheet when I'm feeling the upset, I have a much better chance of getting it off the perceptual screen where I'm in reaction mode and back into my mind where I can look at what the upsetting emotions are, what the upsetting thoughts are, and what the underlying beliefs are. Beneath all that is the desire to have something different than it is. If I can get down to that place in my mind where I can see that I'm desiring something other than peace, then I can choose again. And the miracle is that I can call upon spirit to help me make that choice for present peace. The Instrument for Peace is another downloadable worksheet that takes you step by step through the process of clearing upsetting emotions. It's especially helpful if you have difficulty or feel resistance moving through any level of the mind when taking an upset back. While filling out a worksheet, you may also uncover other limiting beliefs, so you'll want to fill out as many worksheets as necessary until you feel complete. The power of using these mind tools with the movie reviews on MWGE is that it saves time in the awakening process. Rather than playing out painful dramas in your life, you can simply let the characters on the screen do it for you. With all of the subscription plans, you get the written movie reviews and the mind tools. With the ProPop subscription, you also get audio and video setups with many of the movie reviews so that you can go even deeper into the healing themes. With the MasterPop subscription, you also get our library of streaming metaphysical movie classics with commentary, as well as hundreds of clips highlighting the key healing scenes in movies. If you're ready to add some fun to your spiritual practice, subscribe by going to MWGE.org. MWGE is movie watching with a...
For myself, I used to look for places to go to. Yeah. And there really was no place to go to unless you went camping or you went out and sat by a creek. You know, it's you know, if you want that time of nurturing the spiritual journey and you want to just step out of your life, then I would go to a monastery, you know. Yeah. Um, I've always felt like the monastery is the heart. It's symbolic of the heart's true desire. Yeah. The heart's true love, you know, because this awakening is meant to be a love story, yeah. really. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why we're all for it. <laughs> yeah. That calling is is profound and that's the thing I know is that people who hear that will resonate immediately yeah. you know your, your heart kind of jumps a little bit when something is meant for you you know and uh, and so it feels like that's really the offering here is come home come home it's also like just such an honor for us to welcome you and to say yes there is a place there is a heartfelt place, there's a center that you can come to and and really just allow, allow, allow and rest, deeply rest or work through something that needs to be faced and work through. The people that live here have dedicated their lives to living in this presence. This hasn't been a casual calling. It's been a wholehearted and committed time of uncovering and releasing the blocks to this presence. And so that's what is holding the space here, is that kind of dedication and devotion, much like traditional monasteries. And although we don't wear robes and we may look fairly normal this is our life and we just want to invite and and extend um, this beautiful gift of serenity and peace it's it's is a built on uh, such a pure intention of healing and going for uh, this great awakening that is happening and we all feel it it is happening and it's time for us to you know, just to uh, pay attention to that that pull, you know, that real deep pull in the heart for something and not to ignore that but to actually nurture it at whatever pace you can nurture it. There's a, a place for you here. There is a beautiful loving space that's available where you can just be. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining us for, for thus far. And um, we're headed over now to the last step with Jeffrey and Frank. Oh, no, we're not on the screen yet. Oh, well, can people hear us? Show us some people to see if they can wave back. There's no screen. Oh, yeah, there's a screen there. Show us some faces so they can wave if they can hear us. Gallery view. Oh, oh yeah, they can hear us. <laughs> so it looks like, uh, well, welcome to the last step. It looks like we lost cameras for a moment, so there may have been a uh, technical difficulty there. But uh, you missed our beautiful introduction. But this is the last step, and I'm Jeffrey. And this is my very unspecial guest, Frank. And uh, yeah, we... Uh, I'm gonna have Frank on as long as he'll be on because we uh, we've had this connection since he showed up because we both shared you know this journey of the 12 steps and bringing that to more people even in the community 
as I've shared in the past weeks, people would ask me because I would speak rather quickly or mention the fifth step or just something that I'm so familiar with. And they're like, what is that? So I'll try to, you know, explain some of this stuff if it does come up. But uh, yeah, I put out an intention last, uh, basically a week ago about, okay, I want the show to go this way or, you know, I want it to happen like this and just to kind of put the prayer out. And it was to reach more people, to reach, you know, it's not about alcohol in our uh, the book I read is, you know, it says alcohol is but a symptom. You know, we have to get down to causes and conditions. And, you know, it wasn't the drugs, it wasn't any of those things. So it was reaching the broader audience with, you know, addiction to hypothetical thinking, addiction to judgment and all this. And the very next day after I posted that on my, my prayer board there, uh, David spoke at the online retreat and he talked about the linear time anonymous. I went, oh, there's the answer. We can start linear time anonymous. And what is it, you know? It's just this idea, this addiction to think we have so many choices, you know. And yeah, so I actually, this past week, I, I went to a few meetings since since the show started. I hadn't been in a while and another member of the community and then Frank showed up and we, we went together and it was beautiful. You know, we heard some great things there and a woman there shared a movie, a new Bill W. movie. And for those of you who don't know, Bill W. was the guy who wrote the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, which was you know, touted as one of the best spiritual books, top 10 of the 21st century and all this because it had reached so many people. So I watched it um, this past week and it was really, it was called Bill W. The Force Behind Alcoholics Anonymous, but it really showed his process and like how he came to it. But I was blown away by one scene that I actually shared with Frank when we got together for lunch. And it was this discussion they had about, you know, what was alcoholism and all this, and they can never figure it out. And <clears throat> Dr. Silkworth wrote this letter, you know, about what he perceived the problem to be. And they talked about what they did with alcoholics prior to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, now doctors say, oh, you should go to a meeting and all this. Well, prior to that, they actually, for the hardcore alcoholics, they actually lobotomized them. And I was like, and it showed this scene, and they were so shocking to see these people, like, you know, pretty much vegetables. And I was like, I thought I knew what, what a lobotomy was, but I looked it up. I'm like, what is it? And it's actually the removal of part of the, front, the prefrontal cortex. And I'm like, well, what does that do? The prefrontal cortex. And it's actually responsible for planning, decision-making, and personality development. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Like, so then, you know, it's funny, because when I read the big book, my sponsor was like, just look up the words, even if you think you know them. Because as some of the people shared today, this is a constant journey of I don't know. So the words I think I know, I would look up as well. So I actually looked up planning. And this was the definition. And when I read it, I was like, because in Alcoholics Anonymous, they actually talk about, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know, that's just a, a comment they always make. So planning is the process of thinking. So right there, I should be alerted because, you know, the, they say in our book also, the alcoholic, the disease of an alcoholic, the problem centers in the mind. So it says the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve, achieve a desired goal. So when I read that, I was like, because all we're doing by, we're doing the opposite. Guidance is basically the direct opposite of this, <laughs> this quote. It's like trying to settle into, you know, what would you have me do and not think about, you know, what I would, what I would actually do. So it was funny because I started, we were praying on, you know, what was it? And we'd never come up with a topic for the meeting or for the, for the show until the last minute. And I woke up this morning, it was like planning. Maybe it's just about planning. And what does planning bring me to? But this idea of that I have a decision, you know, and this whole show started with the idea of the third step, which is turning over my will in every moment. <clears throat> so, yeah, we don't know where it's going to go. Maybe it is choice. And I have a lot of things, but I wanted to... Uh, Turn it over to Frank because he had a little story he wanted to tell about a planning adventure he had, and I forget where it was. Yes, yes, it was. Um, I was uh, speaking at a meeting at an AA meeting. I was asked to speak, and there's a guy before the meeting asked me to, uh, and, uh, you know, if I could could meet him for coffee, and he really needed to talk. And I had forgot that the format of this of this meeting was actually planning what you're gonna say. Uh, you know, with excerpts of the book, and I completely forgot. So when we were at this uh, cafe, people came in and said, oh, Frank, what did you plan? And I said, well, oh, God, I completely forgot that I was supposed to plan. And I thought I could run up now and start, really, you know, uh, planning something. I'm going to stay with this guy, but I was guided to stay with this guy. 
but a thought came to me. I'd like to talk about such and such sentence in the book. I forget which one it was now, and I had no idea when the book it was. So I stayed to the last minute with the guy, went up, and there was a book there, and I opened it, and it was right on that sentence, you know. And that was actually how I opened my share. It's like, you know, there's no planning. It's absolute trust. I have to, tr you know, this is what I'm learning, is to trust that I have actually played no role in this. Uh, and my, my prayer is always, even before this show, you know, take me completely out of the way because I don't want to say anything that Frank has to say, you know. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually I got this last, way, last time we were on, Uta was saying, you know, <laughs> replace, replace me yeah. with you, yeah. you know, and I, that was my prayer again. I have no idea what I'm going to say. But one thing I want to say about the lobotomy, you know, because I, I, uh, I, I, sorry, you know, I interact with animals a lot, or I used to. And, you know, I used to watch them, and I really envied them because that frontal cortex thing seems to be missing. You know, they just, <laughs> they're just totally in the moment. Oh, God, I wish I could be one of you guys. You know, they didn't even, they, they don't have anything. They don't worry about anything, you know. And my mentor in, in horsemanship always said, you know, there is, um, there is, uh, um, there's, there are no horses with, uh, uh, with horse problems. There's only problems with human problems, you know, and, and that, that's what we project on them. Mm. And so, um, so, so, you know, <laughs> when Jeffrey told me this yesterday, about the scene in the movie. I said, oh, let's get that lobotomy, you know? Let's but that's it. kind of... <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to get one. I was like, let's go get one of those. <laughs> let's get one of those. That's what we're doing. But that's what we're doing. You know, that's what we're doing. And, and I'm learning more and more. I'm, I'm uh, fairly new here, but I'm learning more and more how, how it's happening, you know? And, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's through the, um, you know, through the the exposure of private thoughts, you know, it's just expose it, expose it, expose it. And something, you know, and, and it, something goes away, you know, something goes away. And I've come here a month ago and I see already everything has changed or a lot, not, I mean, you know, it's not, but it's happening, you know, it's really happening. I think the way I thought about a certain situation before about a month ago is completely changed now. And it's not that we sit around here, you know, taking inventory and writing stuff down. We just interact with each other in function, and this and there's something that happens, you know. Uh, it just so the lobotomy has begun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Without having to be a vegetable, that's right. kind of the <laughs> that's the downside. The thing we didn't like so downside. much. <laughs> we actually. <laughs> We actually were vegetables, and now we're being lobotomized. Yeah, yeah, now, now we're, we're, we're awake. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's funny because when you talk about animals, I remember being in the rooms and this talk of step three again, it was like turning my will over. And I thought about that. I thought about these animals. I'm like, they don't have, they're all on God's will. They do what they, they want to eat. They fly and they eat something. They want to do something else. It's all this guidance. And I remember this idea of like, okay, that's all I have to do. And I guess this is what it looks like, you know. And it's the same thing that I planning in all of this is to think I know. I opened up the book this morning and I opened it up to the test of truth. And that first line is just like, if that could be my prayer constantly, it's like the one thing you need to learn is that you do not know, you know, and even after they wrote the big book, it was at the end. They said, we admit we know very little. Yeah. <laughs> it's this idea that they were talking about earlier that Ken and Nicholas made this idea that I know my best interest or any of that has to be continually turned over, you know, in every moment. And, yeah, that's why the third step to me is like this this pivotal point in my, I call it my recovery. Now it's recovery from the world. It's not recovery from a symptom. Yes, it, that's what it is. But, you know, it is, I mean, the whole program, and I think that's what a lot of people, I, I taught for myself, I missed it for years. It is the recovery from the world. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at the step where it says, um, 
you know, hand my life, my will and my life over to the care of God. What else is there? There's mm. nothing else. That, I mean, yeah. if you take that literally, that's exactly what we're doing. Even that, but, the explanation of that, when people tell you, when my sponsor would tell me, what is my will in my life? It's my thoughts and my actions. And of course, right. we know that it all starts with our thoughts. And I had to be explained that, you know? Yeah. 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 And then we go into the 11th step eventually where it's praying only for, you know, improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And that, you know, took me a long time to even practice that. Mm. And I go to, you know, now I go to meetings to just share my experience, having practiced that and what has happened, you know, and how the awakening, because it does talk about an awakening. In 12, it says, having had an awakening, we can now share the message, uh, carry the message to others. But if I, uh, I realized if I haven't had this awakening, I have nothing to share, you know. Mm. So, um, so I realized how long it takes uh, you know, uh, to even realize that the 12 steps is a very radical spiritual yeah. program. Drastic. You know, it's, it's, it's very drastic, and, um, and it doesn't leave room for, for much else. But it's also being practiced a lot, and it was by me, by just going to meetings and sharing a bit and doing a bit of service. But that doesn't, mm. that doesn't give you freedom. No. It does not. There was even, yeah, there was some people at the meeting that I went to this past week and with years of recovery, but still battling with other, you know, the compulsion and obsession actually just shifts to something else. And, you know, even the people in that meeting, they were like, and the idea, it was funny because I went with someone else uh, here from community and we went and I had given her one of my books and it had a bookmark in there with all the topics or, you know, themes in the big book and it shows the pages it's on. So before she prays and she flips it open and she looks and she shows it to me and it was insanity was the word she looked up and it in the book it cost, talks about the um, the lack of uh, the lack of proportion of the ability to think straight is what they define it in the book and of course she shuts the book they start the meeting and the woman says okay today's topic is insanity and she's like <laughs> oh my god and they actually went around the room sharing and when it came to me it was like yeah, I'm in prayer and like, okay, whatever you would have me say. And when I said, you know, I didn't understand what the insanity was when I first got in. And I, I actually said, I said, insanity is actually thinking the world's causative because in, in the step book, it talks about it. It's step 10. It says the spiritual axiom says, whenever there's a problem, the problem's with me, but it's actually taking it deeper because there's, even when I watched that movie with Bill Wilson and not to take anything away from the program or what he did, but he suffered from depression, depression for years. And there was one scene where he talked about, he had all this depression and it was like Time Magazine wanted him on the front cover and they wanted to use his name and everything and it was against the tradition so he wouldn't do it. And he had a bunch of depression come up after that because of this false empathy. He actually thought, he's like, you know how many people I could have reached that are going to die because I didn't take this step, you know, and it's like taking that whole program to a different level is the course of miracles for me. Like it was taking it to this whole different level. So, And the other thing, you know, I'm realizing also what we do you know, uh, I mean, we learn to be of service in AA, but that, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more clear. I'm not doing it for anybody but my myself. You know, it's for my, everything I do is for my own healing because there's really nobody out there. You know, everything that uh, everybody I see or I meet, it's just my mind playing out, mm. you know, and people who trigger guilt, it, they, they, it's not it's my mind triggering the guilt you know and i'm just seeing it in the form of people and and uh and it's amazing you know how how this is all unfolding to me uh the the um you know and and the steps was a really good introduction you know also to expose private thoughts with the fourth step which is you know we make yeah. a a moral inventory and then we admit it to God and to another human being and it was extremely liberating so that gives gave me a big uh, I was talking uh, with Soren yesterday on the way home because I shared something with him pretty intense after the movie we saw and then I said you know I have this advantage that I learned to do this already 34 years ago mm -hmm. that you had to expose you know otherwise you're not doing the step so that's I'm very grateful that I, I don't have, you know, I just can 
regurgitate yeah. anything and yeah. That's but, it. Uh, <laughs> Frank's actually you know, it's, Frank's actually talking about the fifth step, and that was the one I mentioned. And then Suzanne was like, what is that one? And it's admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. And in the book at that point, they call it wrongs, and then later it starts calling it mistakes because we believe that we yeah. have done something wrong at right. that point. you know. And I remember the first fifth step I did, and I'll tell you, it was just, and you get the same experience here being in an expression session. And I remember one of my friends, Murph, I love this guy. We had so much fun, and when I was making my transition this way he's like oh man we could have reached so many alcoholics together and all this and he's like just saying like that what i was like like i didn't like really tell him but i'm like you don't understand what i'm stepping into i'm in a constant constant fifth step it's literally we're in a fifth step all the time and i remember the first experience i have and it was this uplifting experience of you know just sharing all these things i thought i had done wrong and i did quite a few and then receiving them when i had these people and i had so many miracles of people sharing these things that are like seemingly like super dark and you know there was some sharing last night about things that had happened on a retreat when david was sharing all these people at seven minutes to like unload oh, yeah. all their stuff and i was like oh that's fifth steps like they're doing quick mini fifth steps and it's like it's so amazing to actually be part of that and that's what we do like over and over here. yeah and it's so, so it's really um it's so inspiring and that's why i was able to tell Soren something in the car that I never told anybody. You know, I thought I was going to take it to my grave. And I just said, you know, here it is. <laughs> After the movie. <laughs> so this is, you know, that's what I'm here for. It's so healing. And there's so much stuff coming up in my life, you know, and, and just these synchronicities and, you know, and, and there is a lesson, you know, everything that's happening is in my best interest. And sometimes, you know, so I have a bit of a problem here in Mexico with all these ra radios blaring, you know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> how is that in my best interest? But it always is, you know, and then I, whoa, there it is, you know, got to forgive this. And, and, and so, so, you know, it could be this or, or anything, but it's constantly, it's in my face, uh, uh, constantly. And, and now I'm beginning to be aware of it. So it's just pay attention. What everybody says, what, what, anything that pops up now, because it's there for your healing, and um, and 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 it's intense, you know. It's mm. just nonstop. It's nonstop, mm. and some of it is a little bit um, is you know okay. It makes me cringe a bit, and others just comes naturally. So it's not all mm. like this painful process, you know. Uh, some of it is painful. <laughs> Frank's actually first week here was at the, uh, the Adventure into Heart Awakening and he stayed in a hotel down by the Malachi. I think it was Holy Week or something and there was a stage right in front of his hotel <laughs> couldn't it's sleep at all but what did it do? It was it like Coachella you know it was a Coachella type stage yeah. it wasn't like a little, it was huge and it was blaring till 4.30 in the morning so I came to a retreat and this is blaring you know what is that? How is that in my best interest? No, so he I hasn't got, left. I, I got, I'm still here. I got, <laughs> I got dressed. I went outside and I had, I see, you know, and they, they, they had different acts, you know, so there was a rock act and there was pop act and it was, you know, but all really uh, not, not musically, not very good. And so, uh, <laughs> sorry, the judgment, but so I go out, I'm pissed off, you know, and, and I, I, um, I see, and there was a, a charo act, you know, charos are the Mexican cowboys. And I'm thinking, whoa, you know, it's 3.30 in the morning, I see all these Mexican cowboys. And I have so much forgiveness to do with Mexican cowboys because I used to <laughs> rescue horses that were going to Mexican cowboys that would, you know, do pretty bad stuff to them. And so I had this whole thing. I said, here, that's, <laughs> that's what you have to do. There's like 500 charas in front of your window uh, begging for forgiveness. <laughs> you know? And, and it was intense. Trying for, trying for a four-step on the Mexican charas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, it's, everything happens for purpose since I'm here. <laughs> I, I realize it since I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I had to correct that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's actually me. And, uh, I gave Frank my other copy of This Purpose is the Only Choice, which came from some of David's talks. And I read it every month. And 
that's what it comes down to because this idea of addiction to linear time and all this or all these choices that I think are presented to me, there really is only one, you know. I need to be reminded, it says in there, that one line from, I think it's 138, I need to be reminded that I think a thousand choices are before me, but there is only one. And that, that seems to be a choice. And it's the same thing with all of this. It's like, even with the third step, it's like, it's making that decision over and over again. So. And it's also realizing that it's all happening in the mind. Mm. You know, it's nowhere else. There is, it's all in the mind and it's there for healing. And anything that I do to try to fix it is going to delay it, <laughs> make it worse probably, I don't know. But, uh, you know, the dream gets worse. So I have to, I can only address it in the mind, you know, like mm. this forgiveness thing. I can uh, uh, rescue horses till the cows come home, you know. Right. But it doesn't, it's not going to do it, you know. Um, so so um, that, uh, that it's on, an, otherwise it's level confusion. Mm. And it's becoming more and more clear what that means. And also when I, you know, it's, it's, um, it's also now a challenge to go to meetings because there's a lot of people that need help. And I have to realize, you know, I'm not there to save them. And that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. I'm here for me. And you hear it in AA. Mm. I'm here for me only. But it's only beginning to make sense now what that really means, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same thing and going to the meetings and there was certain stuff, certainly in the book, you know what I mean? There's these ideas in here that it was written by Bill, which was, he was Christian and he wrote so many things in there that I had to overlook and it was forgiveness even of the book, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a book right. that led me to, you know, the Course in Miracles. But, you know, when you talk about those Mexican charas and, you know, it's this, this page here, which is 66 and 67. And it's actually, this was one of the problems I, this is what the one area I had a problem with because this is actually after before the fifth step you have a fourth step which you make a personal inventory and you actually look and you do columns the people that you think you have and it's resentments fears and all this and you know I love this I actually read this uh, every once in a while you know if we were to live we had to be free of anger the grouch and the brainstorm certainly familiar with those <laughs> were not for us. They may be the dubious luxury of normal men, but for alcoholics, these are poison. We turn back to our list, for it held the key to the future. Were we prepared to look at it from an entirely different angle? That's what we do with the instrument for peace, or with Spiri, we just shift our perspective. We began to see that the people in the world really dominated us. In that state, the wrongdoing of others, fancied or real, I actually crossed off real in my other book here, had the power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these re resentments must be mastered. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, like this is something I can put my energy into mastering my resentments. You know what I mean? And like, really, that's all it is, is like this mind watching is seeing it come up. But the problem I had here is they have a sick man prayer that they use here. And it was like the goal when I read this, I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense when I first read it, because it was this idea of looking at the other people and say, this is a sick man. And I had had that experience. I'm like, well, this means I'm sick. Like if I continue to do that. So it was this idea of the overlook, like David said it 20, 15 times last night when we watched that movie, this idea of just overlooking that to see the Christ within. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so this I actually see as a step in the process because there's an amen after the seventh step is where we hand over, you know, we, with humility, which is the seventh step uh, spiritual principle that we go there. And that's why we walk and then we make our amends and we do everything. Then when we get to 10, 11 and 12, which is the vigilance, diligence is perseverance spirituality and service then we don't go back we actually don't say this prayer ever again because i don't see other people as sick anymore right. because i'm already under the spiritual axiom so yeah the sick man is just a, a tool to to show compassion yeah. i get you know but there if i see uh you know the sick man anyway is just in my mind again right. you know so um i you know with this work i unsee the sickness Mm. And and yes, I heard that loud and clear when David was saying it yesterday. You know, just see past past the body, right. and now even see past the mind. Yeah. You know, so there's the work. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's we've upped the game a bit. <laughs> yeah, so me and Frank have been reading this. Purpose is the only choice, and I think ah, oh, this is the other. This is the original edition, so I'm not familiar with the pages. 
but it was that idea, you know, he, they talk, he talks about in here, it's a conversation with a friend and they actually go into this idea of restlessness and what is restlessness? And we have in our book, it's called restless, irritable, and discontented. That's our normal state mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and that's why we would drink or use drugs or whatever it was to take that away, you know, and it worked. That was the solution. But this restlessness is actually the belief that I have all these choices before me and I don't know which one's going to make me happy. So how could I ever be at peace? It's actually until I look at it, each one, and then bring it back to actually purpose is the only choice. And it walks you through it. I mean, I shared it with Jason the first time I read it. I'm like, this book is like blew me away. And he's like, yeah, I had a mystical experience the first time I read it. So now I read it once a month and have a mini mystical experience each time I read it. So Yeah, the only purpose is really what is our true nature? You know, what is, what is the, the mm -hmm. only choice is this one choice. So that doesn't leave a choice. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, to go with the true I that I am. And the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is, is clear. I am the child of God. Mm -hmm. That makes me of God nature. You know, that makes me spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Christ. So that's my only choice. And the Christ is no future. So then I don't have to plan. That's so that, that's, the, the, that's, that's the purpose. The planning you know? is over. And for this, I have to develop a trust, mm -hmm. you know, and all this is happening in the 11th step when I get to, um, you know, make that connection. And once that connection is there, it's like, how? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what else is there? It's what else is there? And how can I not trust that? You know, so that's my only choice. I'll actually read that um, because I think maybe we'll, I wanted to go into a few pages of this because it, the way this book actually explains what Nicholas and Andy were talking about and it's how to follow guidance. And there's four pages in here that, that talk about it, but I'll leave you with this today. It's just one paragraph and it's in the 11th, so right before the 11th step after the 10th step, which the 10th step is continue to take personal inventory and practice the principles. And then the 11th is sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. But it says this, much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. If we have carefully followed directions, we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us. To some extent, we have become God conscious. We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. So maybe we'll go into those pages next time on the last step. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for having us. Did you have anything else you wanted to? No, thank you. Sure. Okay. We'll uh, see you uh, maybe next week, I think. We're back on. And, uh, yeah, until then, we love you. Uh, Hey, thank you. Oh, there's AC so, and yeah. Rich. Just looking at everybody up on the screen. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Another miracle marathon, so. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, just really beautiful, you guys. Thank you for, like, just really diving into choice and trust and... Mm. Yeah, just such a richness to that, and it just helps to simplify things so easily. So much, yeah. Hmm. From spiritual lobotomies to Mexican cowboys. You just never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a joy. Yeah, so um, before we sign off here, I, I wanted to share with you all that, or we wanted to share with you all that there's two... Uh, events that we'd like to announce and just invite you into to take a look at them just very briefly in a very light way. And uh, the first one is this new quantum immersion retreat, which you may have started to hear about on Facebook. And um, it's just going to be a spectacular retreat. It's happening at the end of May from the 24th through the 28th. And it's, uh, it's happening here at Frank's house. And um, yeah, it's just, it's going to be a really beautiful opportunity to uh, to come together in a very intimate vibe in a very, very beautiful, spectacular setting. And um, yeah, I, I, I recommend just checking it out because um, it's a... 
check it out. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll see some pictures <laughs> of it soon, actually. We've been taking some beautiful photos of the area so you can get a really good feel for where we're at and what we enjoy here, mm. this, this background. So, mm. yes, and, and then, then we had the next, we had another retreat. Yeah, I wanted to share very briefly about this other retreat happening at the monastery called The Quiet Answer, and it actually just really touched me when I, I was speaking to um, Suzanne, who's going to be one of the ones holding the retreat there at the monastery. So Suzanne and Kirsten and Jackie, and it's a, a four-day retreat. It's not going to be uh, full silence, but it will just have a very contemplative vibe and just really imagine yourself so cocooned in this nurturing, healing, restful vibe. Like she's posted a picture of a cat just stretched out on a bed, just like really just blissed out. So it's an opportunity to, um, if you're already experiencing a beautiful silence within, to just sink more deeply into that for four days up at the monastery. Again, another spectacular backdrop. And um, the other, the alternative to that would be, of course, if there's anything that really wants to rise through your heart and be released, as Jeffrey and Frank were just talking about, the value of exposing it is just becoming clearer and clearer every day. And um, really, you just, there's no need to take it to the grave. You know, you expose it enough and there's no grave anymore. So it just is a beautiful opportunity to continue this purification process that the Holy Spirit is, is joining in us with, joining with us in, whatever, you'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be the end of June, so June 28th through July 2nd. Yeah, and all these events are up on our Living Miracles website on the uh, events tab, so you can check that out. Mm. So. Yeah, and if you're interested in watching some of the replays from the last, yeah. I think we've been doing this five weeks or so since uh, the beginning of March, we're going to start putting them up on our Living Miracles Worldwide Spiritual Community YouTube channel. So you can just watch that space and um, really just go to YouTube and type in Living Miracles Worldwide Spiritual Community and you'll, you'll find it. Mm, you're sure to see them on Facebook too. We'll start sharing them around. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thanks again for joining us, everybody. So great to see everybody there. We'll see you next week, 10 a.m. Central Daylight mm -hmm. Time to 1.30 p.m. Central <laughs> Daylight Time. Uh, we're going to do it because we're a wide angle. Yeah, we'll cross through our wide angle. The light, look to the light. <laughs> Oh, Rich. Oh, Helena. Yeah, yeah Sevi so was on. Well. <laughs> yeah. The upcoming book regurgitates to mental and lobotomize. <laughs> 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 That's the title. <laughs> <laughs>